It's Mooney Valley, 16 minutes away from the Schweppes, 1,200 metre wait for age sprint race for the first time this year, 1,200 metres, and it brings together, well, the Queen and the Princess of Sprinting in this country, the old edition and Miss, Adrent, Miss Andretti, the old edition versus Miss Andretti. And of course, formerly known as the Moya Stakes. From what we're all the word about the setback to gold edition, the bookies just can't lay up. Uh, she's got the three dollars and she'll get longer. Uh, Miss Andretti, they touched the dollar seventy, and the punters. The, there are the uh, the totes there, just right on start time, as Steve said. There. Racing. Jumped in a perfect line too. First out, Miss Andretti headed off by Gold Edition in the early point. Reshuffles goes up third from let go. Tomo and Zupa one. Gold Edition had the lead comfortably a length in front. Miss Andretti fighting for a head's going to go up outside and now early. Then Zupa one and they slow up in front from let go. Tomo and five. Up the side they come and it's Gold Edition at the 600 a length in front of Miss Andretti. Two to Zupa one. Let go. Tomo and two to Reshuffles. Going towards the 550 metre mark. Gold Edition on the inside on a good rain. Miss Andretti Travelling OK, Outsider. They're a length and a half to let go. Tomo and Zupa one, who's hunted along now, and two to reshuffles last of all. Gold edition a length in front of Miss Andretti at the 300. Two further back, let go. Tomo and Zupa one. The sprint is on, and the Queens of the Turf are turning it on on the turn. Gold edition dripped out and out, and here comes Miss Andretti. They come together. Miss Andretti takes the lead from Gold edition. Let go, Tomo getting to third. Miss Andretti starting to draw clear. She's three quarters in front. Gold edition not giving up without a fight, but Miss Andretti too good. The international mayor by three quarters to gold edition. Three away third in the race. Let go Tomo. A gap to reshuffles. And Zupa one is last of all. She's a great sprinting mare isn't she? Miss Andretti. What a battle that was. Golden and ahhing and wondering if she'd have enough left at the end. But look what a mighty little mare she is getting up over another mighty mare in gold edition. Well absolutely. It's extraordinary isn't it? Uh, 35 wins between them. 18 now to Miss Andretti. 17 to gold edition. Miss Andretti 2-0 over gold edition in their two clashes. You have to bow to her now, Miss Andretti. Five from five at Mooney Valley. They ran away from Let Go Tomo, who was brave. A big space. Gold edition, Let Go Tomo third. There's the champion. She's the best sprinting mare in the world, and I wouldn't be too unhappy about taking on any sprinter in the world with her. But the full credit to Gold Edition. She's a marvellous mare. She's near on unbeatable. This mare, the only one who can probably beat her at times. Well, she had fitness on her side. I mean, you were pretty wound up, but you still said there's more to come. There's a bit to come. Uh, but it was a great row. I really... Great theatre with the crowd getting... Uh, pretty awesome. What can you say, Bruce? She's, she's a freak, this horse. She, she raced pretty keen early. She wanted to get her head skywards, but um, once I got her relaxed, she travelled nice and coming to the corner I was pretty confident and like a traditional she pinned her ears back laid in a little bit but was too good was, uh, well done to uh, beaten but not disgraced yeah wonderful effort good race best horse won on the day no doubt no excuses said coming in day there and the world champion sprinter unequivocally Miss Andretti was their star of the show I'm mocking her with that Bruce you finally got off the cold edition <laughs> 18 wins from 27 the 66 percent champion strike rate and she's now met Gold Edition, who is freakish in her own right and beaten on her merits twice. And what we saw from her, of course, at Royal Ascot, yeah, no doubt. I suppose there might be some takeover target fans out there who'd like to see a clash, but Miss Andretti certainly got the score on the board. She is. I use the word freakish about Gold Edition, but so is Miss Andretti, isn't she, Michael? Oh, nothing special to look at, but even Lee and, and Craig both saying now she's turning, she's turned six. She's actually got better as she's got older, which is a quite daunting thought. It is. I mean, uh, we actually had a good look at her when she, she came out of quarantine when she got back from England. And, she, and Lee made the comment to me, he said, I think she looks better than before she left. Mm. Um, so yeah. 2.5 million. Gee, it's hard for a sprinter to earn big bucks, isn't it? She's won set eight. Would have changed the result. But I said on the Friday, Bruce, I thought the only way Gold Edition could possibly beat Miss Andretti with her being first up over 1,200, was to go very quick from the start and really take the dash out of Miss Andretti. I think Staffy half played into the hands of Miss Andretti and Craig knew it by really only going at an even clip. I don't think it would have changed. Fair. You know, I think probably our big concern was that maybe uh, Gold Edition would really roll along at a solid clip over the 1,200 and make it a, a solid 1,200, which perhaps would have been our weakness first up with... He appreciated the challenge and I caught up with Ron Moore, the trainer of Gold Edition, after her brave defeat. But we're not uh, offering any excuses and I look forward to the next time we'll dance together in a fortnight, uh, maybe on uh, our track. I think uh, Miss Andretti on today's performance would be unbeatable around Mooney Valley. We'll see how she dances at Flemington. We may be able to improve a little. You enjoy very best and the best horse won on the day. Well, how's she going to dance at uh, Flemington, Michael? 
Well, she's one up the straight, so, you know, I think... Uh, I agree with Ron. I think it'll be a great clash again. I mean, Mooney Valley's one track, Flemington's another, but um, I like our chances. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if you can think slowly. No. Get off the hills of Miss Andretti. Mm. And I just thought to expose Miss Andretti, first up, after coming back from overseas, you had to be a bit tougher during the run. That was I, all. I, I yeah. agree. I, I agree. I, 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 think, I think he went too steady on Gold Edition as well. It was a very Not that minor. I'm saying the result would have been any different. Minor tactical no. error. Just yeah. minor, though, because yeah. I don't think you should get into Starthy. I think he's ridden her beautifully. Mm. You know, mm. and, one and this is a good race, isn't it? The Amy Vars. And again, we're seeing a lot of open races here today, and this is certainly another one of them. Yes, that is the case, Caroline. $4.40 the field on track, uh, roughly 7 to 2 in the old. And of course, the fast past five Victoria Derby winners have used. The now, a point longer than that on track. But Barry. Dan Man Can, $15. It's three points shorter on track. Brian Martin. Get to run. Jokes are back and they're off. Barbaragus marching, both began quickly and so should Advantry Bay. Woodwind from the outside bounced away fast and just of those classic Brumman on the warpath on the rail. Marching Bantry Bay and Woodwind coming over the winning post, pushing up Classic Brom, followed by Barbaragus, up running fifth out of the straight from on the warpath. Best beware the Sandman. Classic Brom third. A neck then the outside, marching fourth, two lengths to Barbaragus. On the warpath, the fence from the Sandman can making ground. They're followed by Best Beware on the inside, down under boy from Davcon. Then Ribeiro protest to Kibbutz and Truly Beautiful. Up the side of the 650 metre mark and the Vars and Woodwind having a crack at Bantry Bay. Marching goes up on the outside third starting to close from classic brom barbarius into the clear from on the warpath off the track protester around the outside of the sandman can and down under boy got up on the inside it's marching and woodwind going up to bantry bay barbarius further out on the track then came down under boy and kibbutz off the track followed by ribeiro but marching has raced away on the turn marching moved two and a half to three in front now from barbarius bantry bay followed by woodwind down under boy and running on kibbutz but marching's got a winning break it's three in front of kibbutz and home goes marching for jolly hawks marching by two and a half kibbutz barbaragus third down under boy fourth from bantry bay woodwind then came we appreciate the uh, channel nine giving us those pictures and we will hopefully have a full replay for you as well as you'd like coming off as his only hope i thought marching was pretty good now the tempo was solid here they went much quicker through the first 1200 than they did in the cox plate marching sitting up fourth um, he kicked very strongly when Damien called on him. Now, it's easy to be taken by the eye-catching performance of the runner-up, Kibbutz, who came from second last and was probably pushed 10 deep on the turn. But on the other hand, perhaps in a derby, you might like the horse who's sitting third or fourth and who can kick from the top of the straight or from the 300 at Flemington when the pressure goes. But, uh, you know, I certainly have him in the mix there, but I've got this derby as unreadable at the moment. This is usually the race, though. The, I think six of the one. last... Uh, yeah. eight yeah. derby winners have come out yep, of this it's race. It's usually the one. I love Kibbutz. He's got Flemington written all over him. He's a lightly raced horse. He just looks a stayer. Flemington. Number one, Gallic. Of course, Gallic, the South Australian and Sydney Cup winner at $10. Hofmeister, 20. Two from the ring and Steve. I, uh, and Miss Finland. So they're the three that the rank and file are backing here on. Right of there, Sean, but a special scene's gone up. Gates are back and they're off. And they left in a good line too. Red Lord Reggie bounced quickly, going back Jukebox Junior with this the tie. Uh, Lasers sharp and Bling Bling began well. Now Bling Bling got up on the inside with Red Lord outside it. Red Lord Bling Bling from Laser Sharp Surreal it for the back centire. Two lengths into Reggie, followed by Drax back and Visvatay. Two to Dolphin Joe, then Jukebox Johnny, followed further back in the race by Schumpeter to Deep, then Dictator Gallic. Hoffmeister is 50. Red Lord a length and a half to Bling Bling. Surreal third. Schumpeter went up fourth. Laser Sharp outside Reggie, then Centire. Visvatay to the outside from Dolphin Joe. Drax back. Shuffle back, Gallic went around it. Then jukebox, Johnny, followed by special scene. Dictator and Hofmeyer to the race right on now. Red Lord, Bling Bling and Serrera coming at them further out. Visvatay is four wide on the outside. Schumpeter dropped out. Laser sharp, Reggie trying to get a run. Gallic off around the outside. Well back was Drax back, second to last up to the turn. Dolphin Joe weaving through as Serrera took the lead. Laser sharp gets into the clear, going after it quickly. Then Gallic further back, Visvatay. Dolphin Joe up on the inside, then Centaur and jukebox, Johnny. 
Johnny running on. The leader, Serrera from Laser Sharp and Gallic. Jukebox Johnny shut out for a run. On the outside, Laser Sharp getting to Serrera. Gallic is joining them now. Gallic races up now to Laser Sharp, 80 metres to go. The top right, Gallic takes the lead and Gallic wins the Moody Valley Cup. Three quarters to Laser Sharp. Jukebox Johnny third. Fourth, Serrera, then Sentire, Dolphin Joe. Reggie further back, then Hofmeister. A long gap to Drax back. He's won the Sydney Cup, the Adelaide Cup now, the Mooney Valley Gold Cup, the Cathay Pacific Airways Cup as it's now known. Look at him, he has his head on the side, but gee, he has room for further improvement heading towards the Melbourne Cup. That was a dominant win, swooping right over the top of them. Well, a fantastic performance with 58 kilos. Ran third to his stablemate, zipping last year with 55 and a half. He'll go on to the Melbourne Cup in a year where perhaps the depth is 20% below the norm. Why wouldn't he be competitive? Gracie, there are your interim dividends. Number one, Gallic, $10 and $3.40, four laser sharp, two seventy for second. Cup winner, Sydney Cup winner, and now a Mooney Valley Cup winner. Is he a Melbourne Cup winner, Steve? Well, he's not yet, but can he be? I don't think so, Bruce. I just don't think he's quite got that level of exhilaration or perhaps that level of class to win a Melbourne Cup where he's going to be a post. Post-race emotion, and he probably tells the tale of why this horse is so well loved by... Those people there, Nick Williams in the middle, there's Roger, he made it to the races yesterday, and Vaughan Summers down there as well. The Big win. Stands Bruce, I'm sorry, he's, he's, uh, it's his favourite horse, he loves him with a passion. And uh... Beauty, he's a stable star, they love him, he's just gone through some horrendous injuries, he's come through some horrendous injuries. Stephen Arnold never shows much emotion and you can just see it passing the line here. I'm interested to see if Arnold rides this or jumps off a fish and to ride this in the well, cup. Well, if he goes to the cup, you can bet he'll run a, a great race because he can run the two miles and he's the only horse in that race that had any pretensions to a Melbourne Cup at all out yep. of that for mine. Mm. Jockey Glenn Boss has forfeited the ride on Divine Madonna in tomorrow's Cox Plate after losing an appeal against a careless riding charge. He will be replaced by Dwayne Dunn. The Cox Plate is still one of the most wide open in years. Harada Sun has now joined Miss Finland as favourite. Al Segundo is next pick. The Fessen make it his day, just as he did last year when he piloted fields of Omar to victory. This time he'll part the Miss Finland who some are beginning to uh, defend her to the hilt. Last year's runner-up, El Segundo, is still attracting plenty of support. He's well positioned to provide jockey Luke Nolan with a fairy tale Cox Plate debut. Everything's sort of come, to, come together nicely uh, and he's had a trouble-free uh, preparation, so... ...has got it down to half a line when assessing Divine Madonna and the more fancy Devil Moon. How do you rate the pair? Which is the pick of them? They're thought? totally inseparable. <laughs> Nine's live coverage of Cox Plate. Well, well, the last 20 minutes, Richard, it's been all Miss Finland. At one stage, she got out to 440 in the early betting here, but she's opened up a pretty solid $4. And a couple of bookies are even shorter about her. So she's the favourite. Harada's son, who looked like coming in to say 420 or $4 earlier on, is $4.60. He's the second favourite. It looks like Miss Finland is going to run a clear cut favourite in this year's Cox Plate. Now it past four, but it's big. Much shame that Harada Sun might replace Miss Finland as favourite. You can forget it. Uh, the main four that have been back, Miss Finland at four twenty and four dollars. Every time uh, five dollars each way is on offer about Harada Sun, it's taken. Uh, they bet ten dollars for a while. The uh, big bookies on the uh, on the rails are about efficient. That was taken, and. El Segundo at seven fifty and seven dollars has been back. So they're the Your final Cox Plate, Brian Martin. Good on to Caroline. Yes, they're getting ready for the big race. Divine Madonna coming in. They're moving into line for the Cox Plate. Ready racing. They're off. And Miss Finland on the inside bounce very quickly. Devil Moon, Arata Sun, wonderful world have begun okay as they steady down now. Coming down to the judge and going to the front, Devil Moon, Miss Finland insider. Harada Sun is third and Eskimo Queen is fourth. Uh, Divine Madonna's up close on the inside of Wonderful World, El Segundo the middle. Then came Efficient, followed by Ladder the Man and Nick and Nero. Zipping getting back from Morasco and Magic Cape out to the 1600. And on the outside, Devil Moon, Miss Finland over on the inside making a work. Harada Sun going around the outside, heading up towards.
towards the lead. And Harada Sun is going to take the lead in the Cox Plate. Harada Sun goes out two lengths to Devil Moon and got the lead comfortably. Miss Finland third the fence and then Wonderful World got in fourth and fifth on the inside Eskimo Queen. A length for the back, El Segundo, Divine Madonna. Then Lad of the Manor followed by Fisher two to Nicanero, two to Zipping, followed by Marasco and Magic Cape. Into the back and it's Harada Sun in front of the 1,000 metre mark. Devil Moon is second, third on the inside Miss Finland. They're not going hard on the plate at the moment. Then came Wonderful World fourth, a length and a half to Eskimo Queen, one further back running six is El Segundo. Two then over on the inside, Divine Madonna outside it, Lad of the Manor. One further back of Fisher and a length into Nicanero. Two lengths to Zipping and the last pair, Marasco and Magic Cape. Off the bottom turn at the 800 metre mark. Harada Sun dictates the terms in the Cox Plate up the side by three quarters to Devil Moon. Wonderful World's gone up third. Miss Finland trying to get off the fence fourth. El Segundo coming into it fifth now. Running on there, followed by Eskimo Queen. Divine Madonna getting out and further back, Ladder of the Manor. Then came Efficient. It's a great race, 500 to go. The sprint is right on. Wonderful World, Harada Sun and Devil Moon in the Manor. They're followed for the back by El Segundo getting out and Divine Madonna running on. Then Miss Finland, they turn for home. Wonderful World's got its head in front of Harada Sun and here comes El Segundo. El Segundo winding up after Wonderful World. El Segundo's gone to Wonderful World, followed by Harada Sun. El Segundo, some unfinished business from last year. He ducked in, but El Segundo wins the Cox Plate by two lengths. Wonderful World second, Harada Sun third. Miss Finland fourth, then further back of the race, Eskimo Queen. Zipping, followed by Devil Moon. Off Harada Sun and here comes El Segundo. El Segundo winding up after Wonderful World. El Segundo's gone to Wonderful World, followed by Harada Sun. El Segundo, some unfinished business from last year. He ducked in, but El Segundo wins the Cox Plate by two lengths. Wonderful World second, Harada Sun third. Miss Finland fourth, then further back of the race, Eskimo Queen. Zipping, followed by Devil Moon Efficient. Well back, Marasco. Then came Divine Madonna, followed further back in the race by Ladder the Manor and Nicanero and Magic Capers last over the line. A great result. A great result for the connections of El Segundo, Luke Nolan, Colin Little getting up after last year's disappointment. Just there. Certainly not disgraced in third place. No, certainly not. What a race. Uh, Tony Vassal's with me. Tony Arata Sonny was brave, I suppose. Perhaps not ideal to have to go to the front. Uh, Steve, that wasn't certainly our, our plan, but uh, as, as it unfolded past the winning post, uh, uh, Ollie had no real option, um, otherwise he could sit three deep, so he had to roll forward. Um, no, I had to go over and just hide in the corner for a minute, just to, but they found me. I just thought I'd take 30 seconds to save for the moment on my own, but couldn't get it. <laughs> How do you save for a moment like this, though, Cole? Does it happen right here and there? Yeah, well... Uh, we're pretty bullish, really, going into the race quietly. You don't like to be too cocky, but we just thought the horse was going a little better than last year. The race pan out, as you might have thought. Uh, I didn't expect the Rada Sun to go, but I just... I know Luke's got a bit of a kicking for uh, off uh, Peter Moody for missing the kick uh, round about uh, in races, and I didn't want him to be pressured with that. I wanted him to wait, wait, wait. Don't go early. They go early every time. We've got this horse can outspruit most horses, so just treat it like another race. It's top of the straight. 186. Now, officially fourth in the Cox Plate is Miss Finland. Fifth was the other mare, Devil Moon. So there your number. Eskimo Queen has run sixth. Now, they did crawl early, as you could see in the video. Sure it is, Luke. You, you've got a great opportunity to get on this horse earlier on in the, in the spring, and you've repaid the connections and the opportunity Cole Little's given you. Yeah, and I'll be forever in their debt, you know. Um, just getting the opportunity on such a high-class horse. Um, it's just, I saw Vlad Jury go through this same process last week. I was over the moon for him, but I, I can understand, you know, he's a bit overwhelmed by it all. You overwhelmed me. I think we'll reflect that this Cox play, it, it wasn't down in grade. I think it was just, it was more, more top line. Graduating from winning winner. There's your totes, 590 and 220, 830, 130, and the first four on the numbers. Quite deserved winner in El Segundo following last year's performance, of course. And a but it was somewhat bizarre as well. They went eight lengths slower early than they did last year. They went 15 lengths slower than the average. They went 25 lengths slower than Might and Power. It was the tempo of the race, but a deserved winner. That, that part number 26 only for this six-year-old El Segundo. Second in Spanish, first in the Cox Plate. And career earnings now $3.7 million. Luke Nolan's first ride in a Cox Plate. A brilliant one it was too from Luke Hamm. Aplomb. Steve, uh, 
first seven coming to the corner or the first seven home it typifies that what you were talking about earlier. Absolutely, and as Colin Little has uh, so often said, his horse El Segundo can out sprint mm. any other in the land, and I would certainly agree with that assertion. So when no one wanted to put the pressure on early, of course, uh, Huey Bowman didn't want to lead on Devil Moon, I think largely because he didn't want to cross to the fence. There was a perception you didn't want to be on the fence. That left Ollie sitting three deep, no option but to go to the front. No, you know, he had a nice run in the race, and they, they didn't go very quick, and I was happy to sort of um, put the pressure on from sort of the 550, 600, and... Uh, you know, coming around the home turn there past the 400, I thought, geez, this horse going to be hard to beat from here. And um, you give a good kick at the right time. And I think for probably 50 yards, they even put the winner under a little bit of turn of foot pressure. And uh, he was mighty strong to the line. It was a great thrill. Yeah, we gave him horse and faith in my own ability, and we know he pulled it off. No one really wanted to make a decision and take it up early. And uh, Devil Moon was swishing its tail like a bloody propeller. So I thought my horse is not going to be happy here. So I strode on and we had a pretty soft run in front. And uh, he certainly had his chance. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a good run, but it was uh, one or two better than him today. Again, he didn't quicken today. Better than him today. Again, he didn't quicken today, did he? I mean, as you say, you didn't go hard for that first thousand. No, he didn't, but they still got home pretty smart. You know, it was, it was still a, a very good run, I thought. Um, Narrow defeat last year, and uh, you know he's, he's a great horse, El Segundo, deserved winner. She jumped out, we got a lovely run after the follow Harada's son. Was happy on the back, probably not the ideal place when you want to attack, but followed the right horse at the time. Was, felt like I was going better than him when I first put her under pressure. And then all of a sudden she, not hit the flat spot, she just didn't really be able to sprint with him today. Um, no problem about being inside of him or where she was, she's comfortable. Um, at the top of the straight, I thought I was in big trouble to get run down and not run anywhere. But she still, she never sprinted today, but she was very, very dow and stayed on, so I'm looking for further. So Melbourne... She got out sprinted today. I just had a bit of difficulty. Uh, down the list, as we look at some of the others, Harada Sun, well, you have to say he didn't stay. Uh, now had three runs at 2,000 metres, hasn't managed to win one. He's a horse who might finish up at Royal Ascot, as would be my wild guess. I know nothing about mm -hmm. plans there, but I think he'd be suited. You'd like to see him... I think he's a miler. That's... That's the story with him. He's a sprinter miler. Um, Miss Finland racing like a Melbourne Cup horse. Eskimo Queen I thought was very good under the circumstances. Second best last 400 was from Zipping behind the winner El Segundo. He was very strong. I think you'd be pleased with that run if you've backed him for the Melbourne Cup. I guess on the other hand, when they haven't done any work early, they're entitled to run home pretty well. Well, Richie, uh, have a listen to this. Look, now soap it all in. Is this good? Ask me at 12 o'clock tonight when I'm blind drunk. OK, mate. Well done. Good luck to you. You, you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have had a big night, Luke. And yeah. Good on you. Congratulations to I you, boy. I think you did. A wonderful. You're seeing this uh, lovely gentleman. Well, there's a great group of owners. Paul McNamee, I guess, is the big, well-known face. Everyone knows Paul, but Don Howell is joining us this morning. He's brought in the cock. Uh, you run a business with examine the how we didn't get there, look at the strategies. We looked at training. We looked at medical staff we looked at let's not race on rock hard tracks mm. we thought this is his best track to win although he's won three group ones at caulfield but yesterday was uh you know i've had the thrill of playing in a lot in front of a lot of people at football yeah, and, yeah. and uh but this uh racing business is uh you know, yeah and it's and it, uh, it certainly engulfed oh, no isn't it because of the flemington run yeah, well, that, if you think back, and each of his preparations has been one flat run. Yep. And last year after, I think he won the uh, Underwood, he had a flat run in the Yolumba. Yep. And then he bounced out and put on that show at the Cox Plate this time last year. So, Don what will happen in the autumn? Um, Dubai, Dubai, that's still, yeah. Well, Dubai's a uh, chance. We'd love to go there. Um, of the uh, uh, other runners, Miss Finland, Harada's son, every hope. It was, a, it was a real on pace dominated race. Like well, they, well, there they, was no pace in the race, was there, Ronnie? Canada, well. oh, oh, there was no obvious pace other than Devil Moon. And when she didn't want to lead, uh, it sort of forced Harada's son to lead because he, he, he's not the greatest settler in the world himself. And he, he just relaxed in front. He had a lovely run. But, you know, that it did make it a sprint home, didn't it? And it gave those back markers, you know, horses that, that had settled back in the field, but no virtually hope. gave them no hope. Well, the, the first six across the line, I think, were always in the first six the whole yeah. race. Yeah. And, in fact, I think uh, the last 800 was running 46 and a half seconds, which explains everything. It was just an impossibility to make ground from the back. 
the best of the back markers was zipping, zipping without yeah. a doubt. Mm. Wonderful he was the best world. Cup trial, wasn't he? Oh, for sure. If, if he goes that way, I'm not well, sure. Well, he ran he fourth is. in it last year, didn't he? Yeah. I'm sure he ran yeah. fourth in it last year. But uh, the winner was too good. I thought it was a marvellous ride by Nolan. That's the first time I've ever seen anyone aggressive on that horse out of a barrier. He put him in a spot that was foreign territory for the horse himself. But going at a pace he'd normally go exactly. at the back of the field. So and we know he, he can rattle off a sectional. So and they've played some of their winnings up on the favourite. And of course that is Sonic Quest. Uh, they bet 3.30, a little bit of 3.40 early on. All taken. And it's been just a cock. Of course that the money's clearly coming for Sonic Quest despite the outside gate bookmakers bet as much as $3.40 on track. That's been taken. He's into around the $3.20 mark. $3 on the tote. Everything else at this point has it's been easy, Kelt. Mind good, signal, racing. Over on the inside, mind your head, Pinnacles and Test Fire begin OK with Flash Trick. In the shadows going forward today on the outside, around the outside of Tears I Cry settling down. Uh, Sonic Quest just off midfield from Orange County, followed by Dr Nip and Tuck. Emerald Jack in the shadows, a length and a half to Pinnacles fifth. Flash Trick outside Orange County, two to Sonic Quest. One to Dr Nip and Tuck, followed by Emerald Jack. Then came Growl and last of all, Keltar. Up the side they go to the 6.50 now on the Jayco Mile. Test Fire a length in front. Of tears I cry. Mind your head comes out to third, followed by in the shadows. Flash Trick is starting to run around the outside. Then Pinnacles Orange County and Sonic Quest winding up. He's putting in big strides right out in the centre of the track. Tears I cry in front, up to the turn. Sonic Quest out deeper, sweeping around the outside. Then further back, Pinnacles getting out from Mind Your Head. Flash Trick further back in the shadows, dropped out, but Sonic Quest has hit the front, turning for home. From Tears I cry, Pinnacles. Then Flash Trick and Dr Nip and Tuck. But it's Sonic Quest and Nick Lick right out in the centre, a mile in front, and Sonic Quest is brilliant. It's Sonic Quest by three lengths in the run home. Second might go Orange County, a nose to either Tears I Cry or Emerald Jack. Then Pinnacles, Flash Trick, Dr Nip and Tuck. Then Growl, Kaltara, a gap to in the shadows. Mind your head and test fire the leader, knocked up to run last. He's racing in such good form, isn't he? Number three, Sonic Quest. You can see him there out in front in the Throsby. Time, get stoking from the 600, and Sonic Quest quite a decision of winner. He's run away from these horses. Lee Friedman's been saying all campaign that he rates his horse pretty highly and he might get... Looks as if he's having a bit of a blow down there but uh, another good result for him. 310, $1.60 2.80 for second and 6.30 for third. The rest of those... 135.8 is a record. Big win, big margin, great time. 135.9, one tenth outside ladder of the manners record. There it is there, 135.92, home in 36.26. The last 600 was just a matter of watching and waiting for them to say, go and get in the queue. It was impressive, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah, he's an exciting horse, Bruce. I know these kinds of horses are the ones that you love. You know, don't mind getting out of bed early to go and have a look at. And, um, you know, we've had a good opinion of him for quite some time. We've, we've had uh, some issues with him at the barriers. and the Mooney Valley. No, 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 six win from ten starts oh, six in his life. Ten he's five years old. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now... But he's still, you know. Yeah. yeah. That's why he got out to the centre of the track. But... Um, yeah, I'd agree with you. He, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, he wasn't as fluent as he can be. And he's a bit of a trick at the gates, isn't he? I think he's had more trials than he's had starts. Uh, <laughs> trying to get a ticket. Yeah, I, I was having issues trying to get his ticket back down here, so I slipped him on the flight up to Sydney. Yeah, I don't know. Well, let's have a look at how things are playing for, of course, next week, the Victoria Derby. Amy, a Victoria Derby. Again, another change yesterday uh, when we saw marching. Pretty impressive, Alan. Absolutely. Very dominant. Cut. I don't know. This is looking uh, a little bit obvious for, for mine here, Alan. Uh, you wouldn't have been scared off from yesterday. No, not at all. And uh, as Steve alluded to, a couple of the uh, ones we're standing sort of will probably give us a bit of confidence. Master O'Reilly is still favourite. Zipping was the short. Master O'Reilly is still favourite. Zipping was the shortener at $15 into $10. Efficient has been a big drifter, $9 to $15. Gallic after its... I was interested in, obviously, Purple Moon off with Harley have laid. I think everyone's laid it. All the shops have laid it. Last yep. week, but what about Scorpion? Anything happening there? Scorpion has been friendless, but uh, but as you touched, but as you touched on, Marley. Evening, everyone. Star Irish stayer Scorpion's career is over. After sustaining a leg injury yesterday, trainer Aidan O'Brien revealed not only would Scorpion miss the Melbourne Cup, he'll never race again. Brings from the the Hawks team looked really good as well. Now, what's happening in the betting ring? That could be the real. The money is here. now starting to come for exceedingly good. They just want him out to even money out a bit. The links up now, exceedingly good goes in. You'll notice Zing 
Exceedingly good has gone away well today. Ballerina Girl began only fairly. Showing speed is Rian. Behind them, Jewel Hemisphere. And they get on the inside and Reed Oaks 100 to go. Exceedingly good down on the inside and Rian. A length into Ballerina Girl. Still racing ungenerously. Jewel Hemisphere, the fence. A length for the back. Flash and Doe. Grandstand rail at the 450 metre mark. Commission took it up now from Picasso. Three further back, Nado. Then Little Boy Blue struggling from Red Bentley. Exceedingly good down on the inside leads from Rian as they go to the 200 metre mark. The outsider right up there, commissioned and Picasso from Nado, exceedingly good down on the inside in front, Rian having another dig at it, followed for the back by Ballerina Girl, exceedingly good, drifting out wins at a half length on the line, Rian uh, Ballerina Girl and down the outside Nato, followed by Picasso then Jewel Well that was uh, pretty good that horse he did just duck out a little bit exceedingly good but uh, made no difference at all, he's a quality quality horse and uh, has a real stuff Let's have a look. This is the Carbine Club Stakes for the three-year-olds. A time-honoured race. The Group 3 over the mile. And we'll have a look through these horses as far as well. Dollars on the tote at about four to that. Bit of money already for number nine, Shilling. It's just firmed in a half point. At the moment, it's $3.60 in favourite. And over there from our vantage point that blocks out gates one to about gate six. So uh, you'll see it better. Good ran 15th then Sacconi and two to pit lane last of all down on the inside General Eisenhower is the leader about a half in front of Wilson's Promontory in the centre is Schilling a length in Zacruna followed by Moment of Truth Blue Sky is deep back on the inside Queen's Way rightfully yours Modinari Puerto Banus Tesco are off the track from Lucky Duke well back coming to the turn then on the outside Kingsford Chicani and pit lane last for home General Eisenhower from Schilling outside it when they turn in at the 500 metre mark General Eisenhower claimed by Schilling Two to Zacruna, then Moment of Truth, followed by Modinari Tescara. Puerto Banus, Blue Sky down the outside with Electromotive, and Zacconi coming right to the outside. Schilling in front down at the 200 metre mark. Zacruna comes at it quickly, and Zacruna's ranged up, hit the front. From on the inside, Schilling followed further back by Tescara. Lucky Duke the fence. Then further back of the race uh, came up on the inside, Lucky Duke, but Zacruna getting clear, and Zacruna scores nearly a length. Uh, second home in the race would have been Schilling. Third either Motinari or Lucky Duke, then Puerto. Banus. Further back, Tescara. Zacruna, $10.8390. Shilling, $1.80. Every chance the favourite there, but run down by Zacruna. The next race we have for you is the Saab Quality. A number of these horses heading on towards the Melbourne Cup. We are 15 minutes away from start time. That's very close to what you're getting with the bookies there. Number four, Sculptor, $26.00. You can take six points from that, but it has got out around about four or five points on course. The Fuzz, now some money starting to come for the Fuzz. The favourite is firm. Been wound out a single point there, Pacino, 5.20 on the tote, and you can add around... ...their way into the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Now, the horses that have to win, the horses who must win to pass the ballot, are New Kid in Town, the Fuzz, Sculptor, Desert Master, Zavit, Sentire. Jeff and Cup, King of Ashford, if he places, he can get his way into the field. And that's the story uh, regarding the Saab. Fuzz has gone in, the gates go back, and the Fuzz has begun OK on the inside. Cholula bounced away quickly. With Chefaloo further out in the track, the Fuzz is pushing up with Skelter. And Zavit coming over from the outside with Chefaloo. Chefaloo and Zavit are the leaders. Pushing up is Skelter. They're followed further back by Cholula. So they're a bit uh, keen early. Further back then came the Fuzz, who will settle fifth on the inside of Mandela. Pacino behind the Fuzz on the fence outside of King of Ashford. Chefalu out towards the 8.50 metre mark by four lengths and he's gone for home. He's four or five in front now. From Zavit, followed on the outside by Sculter, then Cholula. It's been truly run. It should suit uh, the Fuzz and Pacino. They're back running fifth and sixth up to the turn. They're followed further back by Mandela. Then came Desert Master and well back in the field then is New Kid in Town and Toy of War. It's Chefalu coming back to them two and a half to three in front. The Fuzz three out has gone up quickly on the inside Zavit. Sculpt to the middle. Pacino held up from Cholula, then Mandela Desert Master, King of Ashford, the Fuzz is ranging up at the 350 metre mark, and the Fuzz goes up with Sculptor, they hit the front together from Chefalu, then Pacino getting out from Desert Master, Mandela and Centire it's Sculptor and the Fuzz at the 200 metre mark, Sculptor fighting back the Fuzz comes at him again, stride for stride it's the Fuzz and Sculptor from Desert Master, Sculptor kicking back on the inside, Sculptor the Kiwi wins the money a neck to the Fuzz, third Desert Master fourth, out wide Centire are on the inside, Chefaloo. Then further back, Mandela, followed by Toy of War, Black Tom.
Well, the Fuzz had every possible chance, didn't he, Shane? Uh, just a fairly dour sort of looking Probably. horse as he came around the turn, but uh, Sculptor just too strong on the inside there, as uh, Brian was saying. On the inside, Jeff Of course, the Sculptor had uh, been troublesome in the barriers and uh, gave the Fuzz a what for there, and gave the Fuzz a what for on the track. And Lisa, <laughs> it would fit straight in the win. Is it Melbourne Cup form with Desert Master Jeff and Sentai just behind them? Perhaps not, yes. but uh, maybe always. Better, maybe better one at last year, Steve. First uh, local home. With 57 from gate 18 or something yeah, from yeah. memory. Um, you've got to respect the last start winner. Sculptor, he was tough, he was gritty, and he will run the trip. You do know that. And the fuzz, of course, is a horse who's very... Is it uh, Lord of the Rings? He's as tough as teak. Um... So is his jockey. Yeah. Tell you what, wasn't uh... she vigorous? Yes. I thought she outrode Craig Williams over the last 50 metres. Probably did, but she's, <laughs> she's, a, she's a top jockey. She is. That's well, that good, yeah. I think, what's I think what's identified in this race, both of those horses were clearly superior to the balance and they're going to go on, and good luck to both of them. It is the wakeful stakes, of course, the lead-up to the Oaks. Serious speed. Using favourite too, Serious speed. Uh, under the tow book, he's got this out to $4. Now about it. Now about it. Of course, right in the betting is absolute glam at uh, 5 with the book. He's short of the tape, but they're taking on serious. Even bunch of fillies this season. Here is the Wakeful Stakes right on start time. Here's Brian Martin. Coming in for the Wakeful. Set to go at the Riverside. They're off now. Diana's Secret and Zarita bounce quickly. Extension of time. Catherine Gull began well. Clooney went back after the start. An Antarctic miss coming over pretty quickly. Over racing early. Extension of time. Fighting with the rider at the moment. Antarctic miss is going to take it up. Catherine Gull went up third in a bit of trouble. Diana's Secret. So was Frangelico when he was trying to ease back an extension of time. And Reva Sam was going forward towards the 1,000 metre mark. And it's Antarctic miss slowing the speed right down on the wakeful. A length to Catherine Gull. Two further back. Extension of time. Reva Sam pulling on the outside of it. Zarita back fifth the middle. Then class reveals over on the inside. Diana's secret. Absolute glam off the fence. Serious speed coming wide. Then Royal Harmony further back. Frangelico. Bird of fire. Diva LaBelle. And Clooney is going to be last for home. Coming around the turn. Antarctic miss just in front of Catherine Gull. Reva Sand three out. On the fence extension of time from Zarita. Class prevails. To the outside there in the red cap. The rider got a bump. Serious speed. Class prevails. Flattened as Zarita tried to get out. Then Diana's secret further back absolute glam and uh, further back then Royal Harmony followed by Bird of Fire. Antarctic miss with a kick at the 300 metre mark. A length and a half Catherine Gull, Reva San and Zarita. Then further back was absolute glam. Antarctic miss grabbed by Catherine Gull. Zarita winding up with Reva San. Zarita and Reva San coming to the line together. Zarita on the outside going home better. Zarita. Zarita wins it ahead on the line to Reva San. Third home is Catherine Gull. Fourth either Royal Harmony or Antarctic miss and absolute glam. Frangelico followed by behind those Diana's secret extension of It was a strong run after Greg Childs had to push his way out on Look forward Steve for Thursday Well clearly Zarita Briss but a lot of this is uh, somewhat inconclusive 15.9 the first thousand which is a crawl and home breaking a minute but Zarita is such a genuine staying tight that she'll go on to Thursday and prove hard to beat. Serious speed, not sure. All expelled come Thursday, but I've got some doubts about that. Look, little raw harmony. Yeah. It ran on well. I know it hasn't got the form to win an Oaks, and you probably can't have it, but it did run on like an Oaks filly. Good sectionals, late. Yeah. I wouldn't rule it out. Pat Carey's going to have two live chances, that horse and a Rappaho miss. Mm. The winner, Rappaho miss. It's the winner, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, absolute uh, absolute glam's probably the horse that... Serious speed equal with Reva San and Zarita Eldana stayed home. Perhaps a wise move, 5.50 and we're out to $10 and better. Steve, quick thought on the money. Grand for that trifecta. The Coolmore starts at the first of the four Group 1s today. We're right into the... Gosford. Well, we look, a whole, we look ahead to the Coolmore stud. Ascot Vale Stakes, of course, and well, it's a two-horse race. It looks that way, Caroline. Weekend Hustler. Can he come back from the mile to the 1,200 metres? I want... Betting at the moment. He is uh, currently $1.60 at the moment on, uh, on course as well. 12... Following turns and you, you've got to listen when a guy like him says that and... To, to maintain that right throughout the spring and Rage is weekend hustler. He's uh, he's a relaxed customer. He's a no fuss sort of horse. Watching him parade and watching him canter down. Off they go. 
Weekend Hustler won from the outside, jumped away okay. And he's heading out this way. In fact, he's bringing the entire field to the grandstand side. Bill Moore and Hassan Lightning had begun fast. Shrewd Rhythms come over there as well. And Master Assassin at the tail. So they put the 600 astern. And it's Hassan Lightning and Bell Moore sharing the lead here from Scenic Blast wider out. Just behind them then is Weekend Hustler. He's within two or three lengths and Rubert has got him in the clear with Shrewd Rhythm on his outside. 300 left to go now. And he's had to pull the whip here on Weekend Hustler. They come to the 200. Bell Moore in front. Weekend Hustler. He answers the call. Scenic Blast comes with him. Weekend Hustler got to the lead though from Bell Moore and Scenic Blast. And the champion three-year-old comes away. Weekend Hustler by two and a half after Bill Moore and a half hit away Scenic Blast. Master Sasson ran on for fourth. Royal Asher didn't come into it. Chinchilla Rose and at the end of Shrewd Rhythm in company. Now from Huss and Lightning, a length and a half further back, Weekend Hustler, followed by Scenic Blast. Weekend Hustler has to come from behind. Bell Moore is a length in front. He has to give it a crack with a whip, the favourite, Weekend Hustler. Bell Moore, the leader at the 200. Weekend Hustler starting to peg it back now. Weekend Hustler gets to Bell Moore from Scenic Blast and Royal Asher. He takes the lead now, the favourite. Away he drives. He's too good, the real deal. Weekend Hustler, brilliant win again. He wins by two lengths to either Scenic Blast or Bell Moore. Then four. No, and uh, but this horse, he's a superstar. He's, he's just, his engine goes into overdrive and then still got to kick there. And uh, Brad, Brad, the amazing... Can't wait. As far as good horses go, he, uh, he quickens down and you think, you know, when you ask him that if he's got anything more there, he'll go faster, like a, his action will go quicker, but all he does is just lengthen. He doesn't even feel like he's getting quicker, and he does. He just blows him away, doesn't he? Yeah. The horse whose trainer is Ross McDonald. Roscoe, any anxious moments in the run? Oh, not really. He got back a little bit, and we just said, come on, let's get going. And, uh, you know, as soon as he said that, and Brad gave him a couple around the backside, and he dropped down into another gear, and away he went. Probably good that he has been. Yeah, no, you know, it's hard to say something about this horse. He's just so good. You've been in this caper a long time. Those famous colours, Gary, all those years ago. Where does he rate with the best horses you've had? Oh, I think he is the best one we've ever had. And how far can he, will he go on to the Emirates? Well, I don't know, I'll decide during the week who he go there. You know, he only turned three today, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, and the world is his oyster. Yes. Mark at the end, Shane, because as we saw, just a slight query when it looked as if maybe he might have got trapped in, the run came and it was just all over. Best win yet. Um, mm. You know, concern from some punters. He put six lengths on Royal Asher, uh, and she's no slouch. They'd broken one nine, and that was coming back from 1600. <laughs> He's a star. That's the win that sealed it for me. I don't think there'll be anybody. Oh, exciting, isn't it, uh, Steve? Uh, let's hope he does back up next Saturday. It'll be a good test, but uh, I'm sure Ross McDonald will have him primed to go again if he does. Well, absolutely. It's uh, remarkable to think that uh, the stable field this horse is doing better now than he was leading up to the Caulfield Guineas. To come back to the 1,200 yesterday, uh, cracking performances. We pointed out yesterday, ran his last 1,055, effectively breaking specials record, and that's a little unfair because obviously flying start. the flying start, and uh, he's the real deal, this horse, there's no doubt about that as we watch the vision again. The horse on his right, poor old Scenic Blast, well, he'd be sick of the sight of Weekend Hustler, he'd probably be a multi-million dollar earner <laughs> otherwise. Royal Asher, of course, in the, the pink and the blue. He's effective at anything, isn't he? Yeah, well, on his pedigree, uh, you get down about the fifth dam, you've got battle heights and a lot of two milers in it. And, you know, if he can sprint like that at the end of two mile, it'd be hard to beat. Hard to think that he got beaten at sale only two months ago. Yeah, we are all dumbfounded after that race, but uh, it's been all right since. Oh, look, he, he is unbelievable. And to be on a horse of this... This is a really special horse, and... Um, I think the sky could be the limit for this bloke. I, I think we've unearthed a superstar here, and, yeah. and I'm a serious superstar. And of course, we're mm. up until this point in time, and uh, you know they've just come here in a season where they've run into an absolute superstar. Well, is he a superstar? Oh, yeah. We downgrade the form sometimes. We haven't got the Sydney three-year-olds, Richard. Where do you? No, put no, I've got him as a superstar. He, oh, he, there wouldn't be a Sydney three-year-old come down here and beat him at yesterday no. or at the Caulfield Guineas. I got no doubt he's the best three-year-old the in the, the country. Day, it was the making. Uh, uh, look, yeah. to, uh, look yeah. to come back in distance, yeah. first look at the straight. He was vulnerable yesterday, and I just thought he was sensational. He, he, that was his best win to my eye. Because he looks well-placed, but it is, again, a mini Cox plate, as we've been saying. Let's have a look. Just about six points longer than that on course. Number four is Zipping, $11 for Zipping. That's close to the mark. For the favourite, though, is number 10, Harada Sun, $3.50 in favourite, and that's pretty much exactly what you're getting on course. Sermione, number 11, is currently $71, Sermione. And
and uh, it's about 20 points shorter on course. Miss Finland is uh, the third favourite actually now. Second favourite is Descents to that on course. Princess Cope, the Celt Capital winner and the third place getter in the Caulfield Cup. Number 13 is currently not... Of course, at uh, 6.5, you wouldn't believe it. Best late money, I think I should point it out. Uh, Rada Sun, and uh, now for zipping. End around $9, best odds on course, number four, zipping. Arada Sun will run a firming favourite. Zipping is well tried. Off they go. Princess Cape stood there. She missed it by two to three lengths. Anankov, Devil Moon, and Pillar of Hercules, the first three out from Capture, circling them. And Harada Sun looks like getting into a lovely place. He settled down fifth early, and then Doro Valley may be better to a keep. Next, Princess can lend the pace right on here. Scenic shot second last, two and a half to zipping at the tail. And Anin Cobb is the leader by a length and a half. He's trying to slow it down, but he's been running it pretty solidly. Consequently, the field has strung out over 20 lengths. Anin Cobb led Captious, Devil Moon, and Pillar of Hercules fourth. Two lengths away, Doro Valley. Harada Sun on the fence. One may be better, to keep. Three quarters away, Princess Cape gave the leader nine lengths. Two and a half then, railing Sermiona to Miss Finland. And then Scenic shot two lengths to Zippy. Up to the turn they race. Ann and Cobb a half in front of Captures. Pillar of Hercules next outside. Devil Moon waiting for a run. Two lengths, Doro Valley. Two lengths, Harada Sun, who's being scrubbed up now by Oliver. Princess Cape starting a wide run as they corner. And then Doro Valley into the straight now. Devil Moon's going for an inside run. Gets it now to tackle Ann and Cobb. And the captures Pillar of Hercules has run his race. Princess Cape comes on. Harada Sun struggled and then Sermiona. Devil Moon along the fence at the 200. Led by two. Here's Princess Cape and Sermiona coming up the middle of the course with a Rogan Josh type finish. He's hit the front for Bart. Sermiona racing away from them. Sermiona a surprise. A length and a half. Princess Cape sipping a huge run for third. Four by of Devil Moon or Miss Finland. Just behind them is Doro Valley. Scenic shot and maybe better. Pillar of Hercules captures. Front from Torquay. Further back in the race, Sermione. Then came Miss Finland, followed by Railing Scenic shot and zipping his last for home. In the straight, 500 to go. And on the outside, captures Pillar of Hercules going up and Devil Moon got the run on the fence. Princess Cope is further out in the track. Harada Sun can't when he's struggling. Miss Finland five lengths from them. Devil Moon down on the inside in front. Out in the centre coming at it, Princess Cope. And what's this down the outside? Sermione. Sermione at any odds has grabbed them now. Took the lead from Princess Cape, Devil Moon, then zipping, coming home late. Sermione has won the McKinnon. A length and a half to second Princess Cape, zipping, I think, third from Devil Moon, Miss Finland. Then further back, maybe. Bart Cummings wins the McKinnon Stakes. From... Pulled off one of the greatest efforts of all time. He nearly lived in the Cox Plate, didn't he, last week with Wonderful World, who was 40 to 1 and dashed to the lead on the turn. Look, none of us gave this horse a chance. His two wins have been in Queensland on rain affected tracks as a two and three year old. He was placed in the. Happy? Uh, yeah, he was uh, struck form at the right time. He's it's, uh, good for everybody. What happened to him in the Caulfield Cup, Bud? Uh, he, he covered three wide all the way. When he gets, it doesn't get cover, he over races. And had we most thoughts, but th in this horse, that's how it worked. For two miles, no problem for him on Tuesday? Well, I think mile and a quarter is probably his uh, better distance, but uh, he's in it. You've got to have a, have a crack at it. He's in it to win it, in it to win it, and see what happens. Like that. I still think he's a 20 to 1 shot. I think Bart gave you a bit of a lead there and said he's probably not best at 32. He's about a 2,000 metre horse, but he's going to have a crack anyway. Six points longer than the trainer's age uh, coming up in a few days. Bart Cummings turning 80. Still obviously has it. Semione was horse coming out beating these sorts of horses over the 2,000. We black booked this horse after his first up run at Caulfield. It was a ripper and indicative of a very good spring. He's just lost his way, but Bart has put the blinkers on, mm. the magic blinkers at just the right time. And out of the blue comes another candidate for this year's Melbourne Cup. Best $1 paid bigger on the tape. Princess Cope, terrific run from it after being tardily away and zipping. Well, no one could have missed the performance of it, including the stewards. We'll get to it uh, shortly. The genius of Bart there, Steve. A little gear change, winkers off, blinkers on, ridden the right way, and they get that result. Well, certainly. His run in the Caulfield Cup had been excusable. And at his very best, you'd have considered this horse a chance, but he seemed to be below his best. 
I guess most of us have always felt too that he's a better horse on tracks with a bit of give. Well, a number of horses pulled up lame after yesterday's racing, so yeah. we can't put it down to the track surface. Maybe Bart's just switched him on. He said that himself yesterday. He feels he's got him right in the last couple of weeks and now gives the, the great man a chance. I thought Princess Coat went better than I thought she could possibly go. Yeah, I thought I know. Zipping... You'd have been in a bit of trouble if I she... I thought Zipping was outstanding and I'm sticking with it. What about maybe better? OK, nothing wrong with uh... the way he went. No, I, I was quite happy with his last 250. Uh, and we watched yesterday. Forget about him, Bruce. The best run was zipping. That, uh, Richard, uh, let's start with Dan Nickley from the Beaten Jockeys, and I'll tell you what transpired yesterday afternoon in the stewards room. Yeah, from the point of view of Melbourne Cup, going to Melbourne Cup, um, that was as good as could be expected. He relaxed quite well and he did hit the line very nicely. She's actually going out in the paddock. She uh, followed the eventual winner, um, who in turn followed the second horse. And we spent no petrol. She raced really good for us as we planned to get her off the bridle and spend nothing early. And if you watch really carefully on the replay, you see inside the 600 when we chased up the eventual winner, that all of a sudden she seemed to get her head up in the air on the side. Her ears changed and uh, all of a sudden she came under pressure. She stayed on good, but um, towards the line zipping, beat her home so uh, that's not the normal Miss Finland so uh, I've got to find a new girlfriend. And uh, Harada Sun also pulled up a lame from there. Now Stewart's wasted no time questioning uh, John Sadler representing uh, Graham Rogerson and Lloyd Williams and also Dan Nicolick over his ride and uh, on the, on zipping Dan said uh, he was more than happy. Look the upshot was he was told he should have used more figure from the 600 to the 400 and from the top of the straight. The bottom line remains Steve. He ran his last thousand in a staggering 57-1-2 against the field sectional of 59-1-7. Yes, last 634 which was about three lengths quicker than the winner. Uh, he was very good. Now he ran fourth in last year's cup and he was ridden handy and he did have every possible chance last year. Maybe he's uh, fitter and stronger. Princess Cope was uh, fitter and stronger. Princess Cope was good again. She's been good in the Caulfield Cup, good in the McKinnon, won the Celt, but I can't help but think that Master O'Reilly picked her up and ran away from Princess Cope in the Caulfield Cup. He's still the horse to beat on Tuesday. Yeah, the day like this horse, and he can get on the bit and pull a little. You, you tuck him away and give him some cover, and he's got a devastating sprint at the end of his races. Oh, you say that now. He hadn't struck a blow all spring. You couldn't have tipped him oh, at all. I didn't Where have any luck in the Caulfield Cup. Didn't have any luck in the Caulfield Cup. Oh, you, we could all find a reason now. I'm telling you, none of you said that before the race. Look, after his first couple of runs, I was all over him, but honestly, exactly. you had to drop off. Of course you did. One, one of the main stories out of the whole day yesterday was the ride of Danny Nicolik. You'll see him there right on the uh, back of the field, canning out wide. Just before that, Stewart's, uh, or after this race, Stewart's brought him in. Uh, spoke with Dan about the lack of vigour that he showed uh, from the 600 metre mark. They got Lloyd Williams on the phone. He wasn't trackside. They spoke with him. They spoke with John Sadler. The, uh, There's going to be constant conjecture about the way Lloyd Williams interacts with Graham Rogers and interacts with John Sadler and I think the stewards are becoming very frustrated with that relationship and want that sorted out one way or another. Anyway, it was cleared, he was cleared, he can certainly ride on. Now the ma other cleared, he can, he can certainly major news out of this race is that Harada Sun is expected to fly to Ireland to race on for trainer Aidan O'Brien who will be joining us later in, well in both the Cup and the McKinnon. Yep. Do, we, do we think the winner can run two mile? I know Bart trains him and he'll have a lot of support. Uh, will the market overreact to that win? I don't well, reckon it'll run... $11 for some. Yeah. $11, it's a $20 chance. In yeah. fact, it's what, probably It's about a $40 that. chance, yeah. if not more. I don't reckon... No, uh, well, we'll I'm not going to make a huge statement, but I think... Go on, I'll, make one. Uh, well, I don't reckon it'll go two mile down a well. There, there you go. No, no. There is it. Oh, I actually right. with you on that. Before, <laughs> the highlight... Though. Way to, uh, to end, uh, end a great 19-year partnership. By the afternoon... He's been getting close, just 20 minutes away. Well, this would be a story of marching wins because the last opportunity for John Hawkes to train a Group 1 winner for the Ingham family, certainly as their trainer. Marching, and then we get further down at 450 for, for Villain, 420 for Kibbutz. Uh, marching, round about the same price. In the exclusion zone for this, well, perhaps fitting tribute to come as the last Cerise runner in a derby, the last chance at a Group 1 for the Inghams with the Hawks combination. I think something's expected here. The punters think so. The Manning our judges think so. Uh, Stocker. Uh, in 60 cents, what you see. Racing in the Amy Derby and marching jump well. So did Stock A. Kibbutz slow, he settles back. Yusonic got away well. Also, Villain is going up outside Yusonic. And there's Bamajira showing speed, going to cut them all off. 
and down past the judge down under boy snagged and went back to last and it's Bamajira taking over the running he hasn't crossed over he's tracking a little wide leading from his sonic and villains right up there third he's got over one off the rail right behind him is marching just wanting to tug a little bit latorio is ahead of him on the fence stock a back they're at the thousand bam majera leads by one length marching second the length is sonic a half villain this is building up for a big finish Two lengths, Stockade, outside Latorio. Vespa Ware starting a run. Then came Kibbutz. Three lengths down under Boy. Then Barraquetta at the end in company with Galaxy Lad. They're winding it up before the turn now. Bamajira narrowly. Just about level now marching. Villains right on his hammer. Vespa Ware came with a rush from the back to get handy to them. Right behind these is your Sonic Latorio. Waits, Kibbutz runs on. Bamajira narrowly. Marching coming at him. Villains got his chance a length and a half away. Now Kibbutz winding up from the tail and then down under Boy. Marching took the lead now, 300 to go. Kibbutz the danger, villain battling. Kibbutz hit the lead from marching Bamajira, villain, and a break Latorio. Kibbutz the big boy clear at the 100. He's drawing away from marching Latorio running on late, but Kibbutz will win the derby. Kibbutz by two lengths Latorio. Marching rallied to get third just in front of villain. Fifth over Bamajira, then best beware, Stockade and further back is down under boy. Yasonic's at the tail with Barraquetta and Galaxy Lad was last throughout. Yusonic is behind those. They're followed further back by Kibbutz. When they turn for home, into the straight they come. Marching and Villain going up to Bamajira. At the 400 metre mark, two lengths further back. Kibbutz is running on pretty well down the middle. Marching has got to the front now at the 300 metre mark. He's tackled by Kibbutz. Kibbutz has raced up to Marching and Bamajira. Villain can't go on from Latorio. But it's Kibbutz at the 150 metre mark, drawing a length and a half. Up. He's two lengths in front. Late as Latorio down the outside, but David Hayes, Craig Williams have got the derby won. They're going to score it with Kibbutz. Two lengths on the line, Latorio marching third, Villain is fourth. Then Bamajira further back. He's a stayer, a really top class stayer. Craig Williams wins it. The two and Craig said, what about mine? And he said, and don't forget next year on the Tuesday of this meeting, he said, because he'll be back here again. Now, that's not a bad prediction, Craig. No, he's a lovely horse. Have a look at the way he's walking in. When I first Congratulations, the second Amy Victoria Derby. No, a huge thrill, and uh, I, was, I didn't want to swap horses from the half mile. He was travelling beautifully. Everything else, the story, Terry Henderson rang you when he was looking at this horse. What happened? Um, I was at Scott Perrin's wedding, and very busy, and he was ringing me, giving me the pitch on the horse, and I really had to get off the phone, so I said, look, I'll take half, and, uh, but I've got to go. And then next minute I had half of the horse momentarily. Yeah, you don't have half anymore. When did you realise that? Uh, about two weeks ago, I was with my <laughs> racing manager, Mark Pilkington, and I said, how much of this horse do I own? I think he's pretty good. And he went, zero, none. He did too good a job. He sold it down. Great staying performance, wasn't it? You're going to have a lot to look forward to with this horse. I really do think so, because he's, he's only, that was his, you know, fifth run before today. And he's horse this one, uh, as we said, by Golan, who won a King George the Sixth, Queen Elizabeth over the 2400 out of a Carpstad mare. And he's only for this horse brought out of uh, New Zealand. More on that shortly by Golan, beating Latorio, who's an emerging stayer, and Marching, who had every possible chance. Only two months ago, Steve, this horse was winning a maiden at uh, Morfordville. He's also always showing some raw talent. Big lump of a thing. He's a big kibbutz. Well, he certainly is, but despite that, Bruce, I think the, the key to his derby win was his turn of foot. Mm. 240.9, the slowest derby in memory, certainly the slowest in the last 15 years. That doesn't mean these aren't useful horses, but the key was Kibbutz could accelerate, Latorio couldn't. Laurie Latorio was every bit as strong in the last 200 metres, but Kibbutz stole a march, impressive win, runner-up very good, third, fourth and fifth. The Melbourne Cup is a non-winner from last year's uh, derby, Richie and Shane just... But basically, I reckon the best horse won that. I think what also the connections of marching and villain would probably understand now they have milers and ten furlong horses on their hands rather than out and out stays. Yeah, I think that's the, the case. There's no excuses. He was far too good. And uh, I tell you the biggest attribute about him, he looks like the biggest baby and looks like he's got that much to learn more than any other horse in the field chain. Yeah, he we can start to shake like Richard is. Potentially the best is yet to come. Well, I think he'd have won by four if he'd have gone straight. Yeah. I think he cost himself. Yeah, I think raw's a really good word for him. He's yeah. just big and raw. Yeah, he is. He is very raw. And look... This caper in 12 months' time. Yeah, you, you yeah. just got to... Sydney Derby looks all right, mate. Oh, just enjoy the ride, you know. I'm looking forward to lunch today. And then, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and give him a pat at some stage and a hug and kiss when the eye goes away. I, this next week, you know, 
that, and I'm off. Had some of the uh, beaten brigade, Latoria? Latoria was very, very strong. Um, I liked the way he got the line marching. Wanted to over race a little early and um, sort of put Ron, though, with the slow speed, though. Yeah. Mar marching's going to end up a sprint a miler. Yes. Marching's not a stayer. And John Hawke said that before the race. He said, uh, ultimately, this horse will be a miler. Might get 2,000 metres, and that's about it. We're hoping he's got the, the dash in a, what looks to be a slowly run derby, which it, it wasn't. It was run fairly slowly in a lot of the places, which is only more merit to the winner because that was the... Race 8 at Flemington is the next for broadcast. We're 14 minutes away for the Meyer Classic and no surprise with horse with the track playing so good there at Flemington. Divine Madonna, you can see her sailing down the outside. She won over this distance 12 months. Easy. we'll let you know if she can or not. Madonna, well, she was fourth in this race last year. She's had four starts at 1,600 metres. Fourth in this race, third in the Doncaster, and the other two runs were winning the Emirates and winning the Turak. That, that's just colossal form. I tell you, at the weight scale, she's thrown into this. Level weights with these other mares, well, she'd be giving them a whole heap of weight if it was a handicap, so if handicaps mean... All right, she looks good. She's just on a day, ready to do some business, and she is all the rage here. Now, the mares... Racing now, and over near the outside, Divine Madonna jumps away with them, but eases back. Miss Fantabulous also over her heels, and Prolago, one of the first out up there too, is like it is coming over with Bellini Rose, and now splitting them and uh, running to the lead. Blue, Miss Fantabulous, Divine Madonna's away from the rails for Rod now. She's starting to get handy enough to them at the bend. Gave them about seven as they corner and then Sovereign Miss. Now, Blessed Lead, like it is around the turn, they leave the rails and come out towards the middle. Cinquecino joining in. Translate wider out. Bellini Rose under the whip. Let's see. Divine Madonna. She's the widest runner. She's being wound up by Rod. He's got the whip out on her now. Translate went to the lead at the 250. But here comes the Bonnie Mare now. It's Divine Madonna sweeping down the outskirts to trackle Translate. She's hit the front now and it's a good battle for third. Divine Madonna Madonna in front, Translate battling well, but Divine Madonna, too good, she's a superstar, won it by a length, Translate, Red Fulu grabs the third from either Bromfilinity or Cinquecetto, and then Sovereign Miss, long break Bellini Rose, Romago, followed then by Like It Is, and then Miss Fantabulous Autumn Journey, Weakened, she's second last over, and Blessed was last in. The race by Bromfilinity, Brolago, Divine Madonna easing to the outside on the spotted cap, then Miss Fantabulous and Sovereign Miss, 400 to go. Blessed like it is, further out Chinque Chetto. Translate coming down the centre, Divine Madonna starting to wind up, she's out in the middle with Red Fulu at the 300 metre mark, and across the track, Translate hit the front, but here she comes now, she's really driving into the bridle. It's Divine Madonna after Translate, she's laying out, but she's got up to Translate, then for the back in the race, Red Fulu, Divine Madonna, a class act, and she's drawing away. Divine Madonna wins by just on a length. Second translate, two away, third, Red Fulu from Bromfilinity. Chinkwa. Oh, what a fabulous mare. She's won more than $2 million after that today. Her fourth Group 1 win, and the fourth Group 1 for Mark Kavanagh this spring. And, uh, yep. Mares aren't easy to train at the best of times, and what Mark's done with this, this mare is just outstanding. You know, it's a second Group 1, this preparation. Michael, this thing that's suiting the sweepers, so uh, I was very confident. Yeah, and you've got to... Yeah, well, look, it's pretty exciting to go into a Group 1 when they're $1.70. You think, wow, what's going to go on here? But she walked into the yard today like she owned the place. She was just sensational. You must have... Gee, what a good little mare she is. Divine Madonna, as I said, $1.80, $1.20, $2.30. Translate running right out of her skin. $8 for Red Falou. Oh, total Rose control of that situation. That's her best scenario. Sitting back, getting to the outside, whip left-hand jockey, doesn't matter who it is, and just running them down. Guns them down, short price favourite, home you go. Divine Madonna. Well, she's fantastic, isn't she? Triple Group 1 winning Myla now and uh, she was far too good for these mares yesterday at level weights which she was entitled to be. Uh, Honor was whether she was going to take any damage out of the Cox Plate the week prior Shane if you knew that she was 100% without the Cox Plate and look she backed up 12 months ago didn't she out of this race into the Emirates she looked a good thing. Well she did and it, it wasn't a fiercely hard run. Cox finished it off strong. I didn't think she was actually at, at her best I think I've seen her better than that but at the yeah. weights she was just She's a weighted certainty. Level and unbeatable. Set weights. Set weights. that light. How much would she be giving them if it was a handicap? Yeah. For once in my life, I've got to nearly agree with you, there Richard. You go. Oh. Yeah, I th That's the one.
for Bart Cummings. He can do anything. 780, Shadowways 530, Tesbury Jack 490. Get down the board. I want to see what Timmy Martin's horse. Just go down. Typhoon Z, $13, lickety split. It won down the straight last 12. And the start from Seppel Salinger today. Race nine on this giant 10 race program. The first time we've ever had 10 races on Joe. So we'll keep you up to speed with what's going on here, especially in relation to the zipping inquiry. But Shadowways, favourite here for the Salinger. All set, they're off and racing. On a lead here to Angel Storm Signal begin fast, quick over their heels early. Tesbury Jack away very fast. He's heading out this way. They all will, in fact, they'll come grandstand side. Stands out coming across. Shadowways just steadying up but finding his legs, but he's uh, settling a fair way back in the field. Just off the leading bunch is great as great. Shadowways about the middle of the field trying to weave his way through. Storm signals been seller on behind these horses. Swicks a long way back, aren't you? A long way from them on the outside rail. Then the cat at Choo Choo. A long way from them too. Flying object towards the tail in the bunch field with stick pin. They stretch across coming to the 300. Typhoon Z. Tesbury Jack here. The Angels, the three leaders from stands out. Catachucho on the far side with Onalia coming. Uh, Shadowway's not in the hunt at the moment. Typhoon Z, Pinceleron coming at him now. Typhoon Z from Pinceleron. Swick storming on the outside. Swick, it's Bart again. Swick has got up to win from Great as Great or Typhoon Z, Pinceleron fourth. And then Catachucho here. The Angels stick pin stands out, followed by Unhu. Uh, further back in the field, on a lee, storm signal, stick pin, flying object, Shadowways didn't come on, Tesbury Jack weakens out. Cochinero further back, Shadowways trying to get out from greatest great, then Swick, followed by Catachuchu, well back, flying object and undue as they race inside the 300 metre mark. Here the Angels going quickly, goes up to Typhoon Z from Tesbury Jack, greatest great, can't get out. Uh, Penceleron coming up the centre and further back, stick pin, Typhoon Z in front, Penceleron pecking it back, greatest great getting the split and... And Swick, Swick flies over the top of them. Swick gets up to win. Swick a half length to either greatest great Typhoon Z and Penceller on a great finish just behind those cat. Well, we've got somebody who's won a double now, and it's the biggest name in racing, isn't it? Bart Cummings. He's won the McKinnon, and now he's won the Sepult Salinger with a horse who always loves the straight here, and he came with a steaming run. In fact, he's won pretty easily in the end. Thanks to trainer. Eight Swick, 850, 290. The blink is on for him as well. Greatest great, 850, Typhoon Z, 430. For home viewers on... This track up a straight, providing there's no traffic jam, which did happen the last two occasions. Today, there's a bit of a gap, and he got through and one. <laughs> so. Lovely when you win group races here at Flemington, isn't it? Well, yeah, the prize money good on Derby Day. It's a great day to win. Hey, Steve, we know we can do that. Gee, I thought great. It's great. It was terrific. A brilliant training performance to go under. Oh, outstanding after such a long absence uh, through a tendon problem. Type Z was terrific, punching on the speed. And uh, Catachucha resuming again towards the middle of the track. He ran good, well. Yeah. Uh, but Swick home in 22 and 11 flat. Big performance. You can see this is probably where it changed the, the, the result because uh, Newitt moves off uh, the outside fence on Blessed, uh, sorry, on uh, Greatest Great there in the green white sleeves. And right behind him is James Winks, and a run just presents now yeah. for, uh, for him. That's uh, Swick moving into about sixth spot now and taking the gap with Tesbury Jack on his outside. Tesbury Jack pulled up a bit sore. It's lame, yeah. Tesbury Jack lame. Yeah, but Swick runs away from them, and he's at this level. He does have a great turn of foot. Great horse, and I don't think Bart's had a double on Derby Day for about 15 years, so he, to have one today, last year it would have been a Group 1 double, but they've downgraded this race to a Group 2. But uh, he's look, he's a, a super straight horse. He produced his best up the straight. He got the... ...happening Hong Kong. This is the Elliston Capital Stakes over the 1,400 metres, the final race on an eventful derby day here at Flemington. There we are. Number one, Royal Ida, $6.30, about 30 cents shorter on double figure odds there for this final race of the day. Let's have a look at a number one, Royal Ida. going to run a clear, six, uh, six and a half on course now, so 6.5, a bit shorter on the side. But uh, track runs on the card. The tendon climbing in there. Now they're off and racing. King Zahannis, the one that was a little slow and Valedictum squeezed out the second last early. Shinzig sold a secret first to bounce out from Rockford Bay. Spielmeister deep out, surging on to find the lead. Lord of the Dance posied up fifth on the inside. Spielmeister led by a length, Rockford Bay. 
Lord of the Dance is only a length third. Shinzik fourth the outside. Then Anna's Choice sold a secret. Royal Ida around these. Two lengths count to zero. A Mary King of Fairway back as they sweep to the corner. And north of Havana next on the inside. Roman Squire peels out for his run. Spielmeister shot clear early in the straight though. Three lengths. Lord of the Dance gives chase from Rockford Bay. Shinzik rolling in. Royal Ida running on. Count to zero wide. Spielmeister still with a big lead at the 200. He's three lengths from Lord of the Dance. Shinzik, Royal Ida and Count to zero. Spielmeister at the 100 getting tired. Count to zero. Royal Ida are charging down the outside. Still Spielmeister just in front. They hit the line. Count to zero has grabbed him and won. Spielmeister second. Royal Ida third. And close up then is Shinzig and then Roman Squire. Close behind. Last and last to finish, sold a secret. Well, we've got our double rider, haven't we? Peter Merton's a double on Derby Day. That's new. It was a good win there, just coming down the outside. A double for Peter Merton's after riding Sermione to victory earlier in the day. This horse, as I said, is by Dan. Well, the one comment I'd like to make after that race, Bruce, is uh, congratulations to Terry Watson, the track manager. That's the best I have ever seen Flemington race yesterday. Only the third meeting on the new track. But to see the final race of the day, the leader, yep, hard against the fence. The closer pick him up. That was a fantastic track yesterday. And I'm glad. Welcome back. Well, it's time to have a look at the big race on Tuesday, the uh, the Melbourne Cup, and uh, we're going to each and every year. Lovely to see you, Dominic, even though it's so cut the cup this year. Oh, I'm very impressed with Marla. Yeah. I think Marla's got all the, all the stats to win. He's progressive. He's only retarded rating once in his life. Yeah. Uh, he has something very in common with uh, Mackaybe. Mackaybe had her eighth run here at, at age three years and 11 months when she won the Queen Elizabeth at Flemington. And I see no reason why Marla won't, uh, won't win the cup. All right. Let's move on to efficient. This is number six. And uh, Graham Rogerson, the trainer. Michael Rod is to ride. Yeah, he comes out of a suspect derby when you look back on it last year. He was you didn't say that last year. No, you obviously. You were claiming him the next big thing. Yeah, well. He hasn't won a race yeah, he, he has been disappointing. Yeah. Although, pain, but um, Steve Arnold's dumped him. Everyone's dumped him. No, I don't think he can win. I, I, I don't think he's been going well enough. I think they've... they've, they've since. Maybe going over the sticks might help him during the week. Yeah. Well, his, his work on Tuesday was certainly a lot brighter than what they uh, probably hoped coming out of it. Don, what, what, where do you put the derby winner from last year? Well, last year he won the derby with a bias. Everyone knows the rail was the go last year and uh, it was a beautiful ride by Michael Rod to take advantage of mm. that. And uh, I argued strongly he shouldn't run in the cup last year. And he did himself a, a favour, the horse, and uh, didn't, uh, didn't end up running. But he really does look under the odds here. Mm. He isn't in the same form as last year, and he, he'd be very doubtful to win. We should mention... Last year in a cox plate, not an undersuit, Steve. No, it certainly wasn't. Um, oh, look, I don't give this horse any possible chance. I thought he's winning the derby. Curtis, if you had a brilliant ride last year against ordinary opposition, was flattering, and I would fall out of the stand if Efficient won the Melbourne Cup. Uh, turf? Yeah, look, she was maybe the dis most disappointing horse of the spring, Steve. You know, we had such great expectations. Disappointing. Arnold, is he clever? Because doesn't he dump this horse? Yes, because Michael Rod's the last uh, winning jockey on this horse, Matt, so that's why Michael's that was, that back on. Move on to uh, zipping. <laughs> Let's talk about Master O'Reilly. Bigger shock if you had a big... Vlad Yurik to ride. <laughs> uh, Danny O'Brien is our special guest. Uh, that, that feeling, that, you know, that inner glow that trainers oh. get when they think they know something people don't. Look, we're looking forward to running in. And you're not... Con Riley's biggest uh, plus is that he ran a personal best last start. Uh, Melbourne Cup isn't won by horses who don't. Uh, year after year after year, the Caulfield Cup's a great guide. There's a lot of horses that won the double. He didn't get a very heavy penalty. Uh, he's racing very, very well. He's in winning form, and uh, he, he, I think, however, is under the odds. I think there's a, I think there's a, a, a depth of talent in the race, and I think. But Mark can he win? Master O'Reilly can win. He's about a 10% chance to win. I think he's marked much shorter than that, and I think he'll be long Tuesday than the market's got him at the moment. He's got half a dozen behind him. Yeah. In my opinion, I think he's. I think he's overs. I think he's going to start three to one. This horse. No, I, I, I just think he's the best thing I've seen go around the Melbourne Cup for years. What price is he? Five to five fifty. But looking at his form, Danny, I think he's had six starts, twenty-four hundred metres and beyond. Won five of them and got beat. Uh, ran second in the other one. So he's on trial at thirty-two hundred, like the rest. But at least he's got very, very strong twenty-four hundred form, and he's coming. You're right, Glenwood. Moon coming up on your screen now. It's number twelve. And uh, Luca Kamani is the trainer. Damien, Moon, Dominic. 
Purple Moon is, a, is a, it seems to be a very well established recent his, history of, uh, of international horses having one run before the Melbourne Cup. Uh, Delta Rock, uh, Delta uh, Blues and Pop Rock last year, Media and Puzzle. Media Puzzle won the Geelong, and I like this pattern, and Purple Moon raced very, very well. He's winning the E-Ball, he beat a horse called Honolulu, who's got the same form through Marla, and it's a uh, it's very good form, and I, I think Purple Moon has got a very strong chance to win the Cup. Dominic, the amount of ground that he covered, and taking into consideration getting hurled up there. Uh, Purple Moon rated about four or five lengths below the e ball win, and so he's got she, he's got a lot up his sleeve. Yeah. Do you think we could? We great. At, uh, the bottom one, Marla, the one, this is the one I like, and it's drawn nicely too at barrier six. Uh, Stephen Baster is to ride. A few days he settled down well. Yeah. Okay. Aiden, here he is in the St Ledger. Um, how good was that performance in your view? Yeah, he stayed well in the in the Ledger. The Ledger was a, is a mile and six. Um, um, like we were very happy with his run there. And if you see, he took a skip about yeah. 50 yards from the line and just lost yeah. his action. He hit, he hit a bit of uh, uh, unlevel ground. Um, uh, this run um, was part of the reason why we came. Uh, if you see, the, the third horse here was our horse called Honolulu. And when Honolulu was second to... Um, uh, Luca Kamani's horse, um, Purple, Purple, Purple Moon. Moon. Yeah, yeah he, he was. He was. Um, Mahler would have had a lot less weight in that race, um, and, and Mahler met him there at levels and, and uh, uh, finished just in front of him. The horse right. fact is, we think he's going to be a very high class stayer next year, and we would have felt if we didn't come this year. Um, thinking what he could do next year, he'd probably be closer to the top than the bottom. So we just felt when... Well, the, the weights for the Melbourne Cup came out nine, da 12 days before the St. Ledger. Yes. And there's no doubt he would have got, I think, an extra kilo and a half or two mm. more had uh, Mr. Carpenter had access to that last start. It's a phenomenal performance. And on that rating, there's a lot of, there's a lot of form lines going into that race to, to prove the time form rating 118, I thought 119 to be accurate. A three-year-old and 11-month horse in our in our part of the world with that weight on my ratings needs 65 and a half to win. He rated 65 and a half exactly. Mm. He's gone ahead every start he's ever been in the race is races except in the Derby. You know, he, he played. He was a bit anxious in the Derby day, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, he was a baby really in the Derby. Yeah. Right. Well, if he goes ahead again tomorrow, then he may as well write in the check. Yeah, well, he's halved his quote in the last week. He was $17 <laughs> last Monday and was back to win a million in three days. And he's now the $8 second favourite for the Cup. Wouldn't you mind just... Lots of circumstances can change. And listen, uh, I, uh, we would have been thinking a little to overcome it, but this is hopeful. Yeah. Well, it's clearly a matter of probability. Yeah. And uh, he has to take that rating here. Yes, bring it here. absolutely. And that's, that's, that's not certain. No, that's absolutely it's seasoned enough. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? Such a lightly raced horse who's not yet turned four but he can race on the pace and I just, you've got to respect Aidan O'Brien. Turf? I agree with him. I think he's uh, probably too, too slow. Um, ah, gee. The, the key to Aidan running this horse is Honolulu, who was behind Purple Moon in the Ebor. And on that strict line of form, then marla has got about a stone and a half in hand of, of Purple Moon at the weights. But the problem is he is quite a slow horse. He's going to be the next Yates. Yates wasn't good enough, admittedly, off a big weight. I don't think Marla's anywhere near Yates at this stage. Aidan made a huge mistake. I begged him on air back home to run Septimus, who would have absolutely lacked this lot off a high weight. But unfortunately, he's sent Marla, and Marla's too slow. Top three for you, Matt, quickly. Uh, top three for the race as a whole. Uh, I'll go Master, uh, maybe better to win. Master O'Reilly second, Purple Moon to finish third. Okay, $1 dollars me own was $81 before yesterday. In dollars, believe it or not, Princess Cope. Oh. Purple Moon, I think, is getting out to some good odds now. It's out to $10, and I think there'll be a lot of interest in Purple Moon. But so you can see what some punters have got. You've got a fishing as your, your total worst. You'd be happy with that, wouldn't you? It was favourite, first favourite when you put the markets up. Absolutely, we had a lot of doubles through. We had someone take a double through Geelong to win the AFL Premiership into efficient to win the Melbourne Cup. Um, Master O'Reilly has now caught up to it. So Master O'Reilly and efficient error are two O'Reilly and efficient error are two worst by a long way. I think that uh, I think at ten dollars purple moon I'd be happy to be on. Purple moon from Alice Scandal. Let's get to beat number eleven Master O'Reilly. Just you cannot fault this guy's preparation. Caulfield Cup winner, etc. 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 And I'll chuck in Purple Moon just to the differing orders a uh, Master O'Reilly Purple Moon. I want to throw maybe better into third on I'm starting to think zipping is going to be massively under the odds. And Riley, Purple Moon, zipping, and best rugby for mine, sculptor. Oh, oh, no, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was, I was convinced this morning I walked into. Uh,
Well, it's 50. I think it's a certainty, Master O'Reilly. I respect Tungsten strike, and I think Zipping's trained for the race. Now, well, Rich, well, I'm nearly as big as Richard, so can I do Richard's well, Richard's had to go for another oh, multi-media. I'm all over Marla. I think Zipping, Zipping's been my pick for the Melbourne Cup for a long period, and I like Princess. They like to call Princess Coop. It's Princess Cope. 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 Yeah, well, That's his well. name, Ray Copeland. Ray he Copeland. likes Princess yes. Coop. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm sticking with what I think is the obvious, uh, the Caulfield Cup form. Um, yeah, I'm very interested in... in and, uh, it's all unknown. There's been a flood of money today for the Danny O'Brien train Master O'Reilly, which remains well on track for the Cups double. Alan Iskander's bet star has reeled it in from 550 to 460 after taking one bet this afternoon of $200,000. Lloyd William Zipping also continues to attract plenty of money. Seven minutes uh, now looking at, uh, of course, we've had the news that we've had uh, maybe better also scratched today after Gallic and the Fuzz were both scratched this morning. Craig Williams is going on board at Railings replacing $7.70. Master O'Reilly, gee, not much between Master O'Reilly, Purple Moon, 440. Getting closer and closer, of course, they've all shortened in the past five minutes, and that's because there was a fair bit of maybe better money in there tonight as, a, as about an $18 chance. Then the fuzz came out as about a 30 to 1 chance. Cynic shot wouldn't have made much of a ripple. And then you get maybe better out of the road, so all these. To go at 49. A fisher who won the Derby last year. The last four year old to win the Melbourne Cup after winning the Derby, Farlap, 1930. Tungsten Trike is at 37. Zipping at 7. Our favourite master O'Reilly, but he's being pressed, isn't he, by Purple Moon. The but the, all the action here is, and there's no surprise, it's all for uh, the favourite, Master O'Reilly. But 5.50 yesterday into $5, massive go then. They put up 4.80 this morning into 3.70 before race 6. He's a, a very strong and dominant 3.80 favourite. But this will be a complete sweep out for bookmakers if Master O'Reilly wins the Melbourne Cup. And he walked around the mounting yard like he was points to win winning the Cup. The money does, the form does, and I think he will. All right, thank you, Bruce. Shane, your final thoughts on the uh, Melbourne Cup. I've been with him all along. He's, he remains my top pick. And clearly, I think Purple Moon, Zipping are the only two that can beat him, and Marla are the only two that can beat him, and Marla would be my fourth pick. Coming to Peter Merton's. Also, also. Racing now. Master O'Reilly began well. So too did Purple Moon. Lays the sharp. Scenic shot easing in, and so is Sermiata. Down towards the inside, Sculptor away quickly with Tungsten Strike. Dolphin Joe not far away from the speed. Blue Tiger who goes forward. Blue Monday also on his outside. Marla's just off the speed in the early stages of the race now. And they're coming along to the 2,800 metres, settling into stride. Tungsten Strike has the lead. From Sculptor on his outside second, Marla striding freely deeper out, got up into third placing early. Blue Tiger Roo is behind him. Dolphin Joe handy with Sculptor near the inside, and they're followed by Blue Monday. Just behind those, Doro Valley on the rails, two and a half lengths to Purple Moon, and behind him is Torquette, and then came Laser Sharp, Eskimo Queen. Next then is Proficient and being followed a length and a half for 1700. And Tungsten strikes still the leader. A length and a half in front, Marla second. Sculptor is third down on the inside. They're followed by Dolphin Joe on the inside of Blue Tiger A length further back is Blue Monday. Doro Valley the rail, two lengths to Purple Moon. They're followed then by Torquette. Laser sharp outside him. A length further back in the field then came Eskimo Queen. She's followed by Proficient a length and a half on Azurne. Black Tom worse in midfield. Two to three lengths further back is zipping and then came Princess Cope two lengths to Master O'Reilly G gets him a long start behind him is Railings and then Sir Miona, followed by Serera and Scenic Shot still last they've really wound the tempo up mid-race Tungsten Strike led by Nick Tamala a length and a half to Sculptor Blue Tiger Roo fourth at the thousand then Dolphin Joe Blue Monday a length Doro Valley Purple Moon two lengths Black Tom back behind those horses then is Torquay on his own commences a run around the outside Efficient feeling the pitch, Master O'Reilly ridden along now, and then Eskimo Queen and Princess Cape as they neared the turner, and well back as Sermiona Serera and railings at the end with scenic shot on the turn in the cup now. And Marla goes to the lead, Tungsten Strike has gone, Blue Tiger Roo and Purple Moon are there, Black Tom is wider, and Zipping is coming with a run. Master O'Reilly's got right to the outside, Marla the leader in the cup from Purple Moon, Sculptor, Doro Valley the rail, laser sharp runs on Zipping and Efficient is coming down the outside. Purple Moon for Rally. Got to Marla now. Here comes Efficient. He's mowing them down out wide. Purple Moon in front. Efficient the only danger. Purple Moon in front. Efficient is getting there. Efficient getting to Purple Moon. Efficient is going to win the cup. Half a length to Purple Moon. Three lengths to Marla. Sipping fourth and then Dolphin Joe on a turn. Next to finish Blue Monday, Master O'Reilly. Scott the laser shot.
Sharp Sermiota. Behind them is Goro Belly, Princess Cape Eskimo, Queen Sarira. And then Tor Keats to finish in the Emirates Melbourne Cup of 2007. Coming up towards the side of the track. They're out towards the 850 metre mark, and Mala goes up to Tungsten Strike. And they clap it on by a length and a half to Skelter. Blue Tiger Roo on the outside. Then came Blue Monday. Further back, Purple Moon taken to the outside as they start to pack up and come around the turn. And Mala takes the lead. The Irish Galloper Mala in front from Blue Tiger Roo. Purple Moon is looming. Black Tom and the widest runner is Master O'Reilly. And coming with him is Zipping in the red cap. Mala first for home. Juro Valley the inside. Purple Moon going out after Marla, followed by Skelter. Down the outside now is Laser Sharp and Zipping. Then came from the back of the field. Here's Efficient starting to fly home. Efficient after Purple Moon who reaches the lead. Purple Moon in front for Damien Oliver on the outside. Efficient stride by stride going after him. Purple Moon in front. Efficient looming up on the outside. Then Marla followed further back by Zipping. It's Efficient getting his head in front. Efficient wins the Melbourne Cup. Wins it an neck to Purple Moon. Three away third is Marla. Then came Zipping from Dolphin Joe. On a jeune, followed by Blue Monday. Further by Blue Monday. Further back then, Master O'Reilly. They're followed by Sk Michael Rod for Graham Rogerson for Lloyd Williams. Efficient, who won the Derby last year and has not run a place in a race since that, has won the Cup. And as I said earlier, you've got to go back to Farlap. The last time a horse has won the Melbourne Cup in the year after winning the Victoria Derby. It was a fabulous race. Damien Oliver second for the second year in a row and for the third time in his career. And Marla. Efficient had him. Marla done a great job in third position there. He battled on so well. And but zipping fourth for the second row in for the second time in a row. And Danny Nick. You can't believe you won the Melbourne Cup, Mike. I just won the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> I don't know if anyone at home. I just won the Melbourne Cup. I can't believe it. It's this is just unbelievable to do it on this little horse. And for Lloyd Williams who who gave me so much when I first came down here. It's just, I can't believe it, honestly. This is just a dream. I and the winning trainer, he found a good time to return to form. Yeah, I'm just glad, good on you, Lloydie, to be part of the Lloyd Williams team, you know. He were, they all put in, and this horse, it was just great. And that, you know, this morning with the disappointment in Gaelic, and this horse, and, and the zipping, they run well. Five years ago, Lloyd said to me, Roger, you will win this Melbourne Cup. And uh, to sit with his wife Susie and that, to, to me, it's the greatest thing that's happened to me. 12. That Michael missed out on the Caulfield Cup. He was on the favourite in the Caulfield Cup and he was scratched in the barrier. Maldivian, and he didn't get to ride that day. Two and a half weeks later, he wins the most prestigious race and certainly the biggest race. He, his name goes into folklore history here winning a Melbourne Cup. I can't help but feel for Stephen Arnold, who has ridden this horse in his one, two, three, four, last four starts. Um, he decided to ride Gaelic. He couldn't ride this horse. Who... He's always been in form and racing well. He just sort of, he's been getting held up in his runs and been had horses around him. He, he has to get to the outside to show his best and he did that today. Did he let go and oh, came quick? He did. I uh, tried to come off the fence at about the half mile and zipping and that whipped around and pushed me in. Um, so I sort of waited and came out and just got right to the outside and I gave him a dig just come around the turn and I thought, oh, I'm a chance here. So I just sat on him and sort of counted to 10 and then... Yeah, when I went, just just wore down Purple Moon. Yeah, Mike. Stable and uh, they've just done a remarkable job. And Michael rode this horse absolutely to plan. So, uh, you know, he wanted him to get, it, get him out to the outside. We just realised that uh, he, he only uh, travels when he's going round horses. Uh, and when he let him down, Michael did a wonderful job. So I was really thrilled for Michael. Uh, Williams, for a third time, wins the Cup. First in 81 and 85 as an owner. And I reckon mathematicians might do it right. 6, 12, 24, doesn't that have a ring to it? That's the trifecta, and the first four, the nine. So if you're into the threes times table, you have done remarkably well here today. $22, $1.84, the Quinella 76, the Zacta 176, the trifecta 1431, the first four, 8,788. The more you think what a great run it was, he was racing about one off the fence, but... Tungsten Strike inside him was actually a horse away from the fence, pushing Marla three deep for some of that journey, so he's done a great job. And he was sitting sharp, wasn't he, out in front, but what I liked about the race this year, it was such a clean race going out of the straight the first time. Normally, with about a first... Michael Rogg we've seen, and what about Ollie? Second for the 
second year in a row, second for the third time in his career. He's won two, I know. Have you had a chance to talk to Ollie? Yeah, I had a reflective couple of minutes with Ollie. He said two years in a row where he thought he had the race won at the 300 metre mark. Um, once he'd gone and had a look at the replay, though, his opinion changed. He said, efficient deserved to win. He covered six lengths more than me around the last bend, and, uh, and my horse had his chance. So he was a... Uh, he was a, a pretty modest sort of guy after the race. Looking ahead. But efficient stride by stride going after him. Purple Moon in front. Efficient looming up on the outside. Then Mahler followed further back by Zipping. It's efficient getting his hand in front. Efficient wins the Melbourne Cup. Wins it an act to Purple Moon. Three away third is Mahler. Then came Zipping. Well, after all the day of drama, the scratchings, we ended up with a fantastic cup nonetheless. Efficient giving Michael Rod. A Group 1 Melbourne Cup victory for a CV already bursting with uh, success. Damien Oliver, you can't get off and carry him. Purple Moon had every possible. Yeah. Aidan O'Brien, Mahler, he'll be back absolutely buoyed by his first foray into the Melbourne Cup live. Absolutely. Damien Oliver second for the second year in a row. Zipping fourth for the second year in a row. That was the efficient we saw in last year's Victoria Derby. Same time last year. We hadn't seen it since, but we certainly saw it again. What a tale of two jockeys there. Michael Rod. Did the right thing, rang early in the, in the spring, said, Mr Williams, I think I'd like to separate here. I've got a few other things. I'd like to go freelance. Fine, off you go. Somehow in the cycle finishes, he finishes back on efficient. And you know the... S Stephen Arnold. Yeah. He starts on efficient, jumps to Gallic and winds up on railings in the space of 10 days. It was a week of those sort of stories, Shane, but... Uh... Comes back. He's world-class, Michael Rodney. He's in the top five jockeys, I think, in the world now. Was you know it was fantastic. We see him hanging in there just on the head-on. We, we see him hanging in just over the last bit, and that's just him being a bit weary. And but you had to really balance how you held him away from you know crossing and perhaps causing interference, and kept him going straight, and yet keep him going forward. Because if you'd have stopped to straighten him, you might not have quite got Purple Moon. No, it's that's right, Richard. It's a fine balance. You've really got to strike and. He's a horse that's always has hung in. He did the same in the Derby. So um, yeah, you've got to play it a little bit, but. Um, oh, it's not too bad. Going into the race, Michael, like, you know, it had a different type of campaign to what, you know, sometimes we're used to, and Lloyd opted to do the same as what he did with zipping. How confident were you, were you that it had run the 3,200 metres? Because that was the quick question. We know he won the derby, but nothing's come out of the derby, and his form wasn't all that good. Yeah, but <clears throat> his form was over the 2,500 metres, and, yep. and he showed that he... He can run it out strong, so um, I was pretty confident he would run it. I mean, this was a race he's been set for for the whole year, yep. and this is probably a race Lloyd did by the horse four. So, um, it's there on that page, 7.30 for Arapaho Miss, and then you get out to... Looking Oaks Market, generally there's one standout or one or two and a big gap to the others, but not so this year. It's a very open race and weight field, so this is going to be an interesting it is indeed. We are a minute away from start time here. They should be starting to load these fillies into line. We'll see what we can see there. There is Sirius. They're off in the crown oak. Sarita began very quickly down towards the inside. Also Eldana away fast. Reva Sand going forward to Diana's Secret and Bantry Bay. Gee, this is a charge. Try this just off the leading bunch. Royal Harmony easing back. And the speed battle there about seven deep. Bantry Bay right off the course, leaving the straight where Class Prevails had the lead here. From uh, moving up is Diana's Secret. Bantry Bay got the third. Sarita steadies and gets a good run. Fourth over on the inside. Rebales is the leader. Reva Santa neck away second. Two lengths, Bantry Bay. Outside, serious speed. A length and a half away in the field. Then came Diana's Secret. Royal Harmony and the green silks on the rail. A length and a half, Zarita, who has uh, Eldana improving around her and Arapaho miss on the rails. Then Grand Journey. Bourgogne is eight near the turn. They're starting to bunch a bit. Try this is still well back with Marjorie. Paloma Bella getting up on the inside and Diva de Bell is wide out. They corner now. Class Bales has been headed by Reva Sand. Bantry Bay challenges. Out wider is Diana's secret and Eldana. Let's look for Sarita. She's just behind the leading bunch, but she's boxed in looking for somewhere to go. Reva Sand leads. Serious speed is out challenging her. Royal Harmony, a rapper her miss. Switch to the inside. Sarita's not close enough. And then Grand Journey. Serious speed with Royal Harmony and a rapper her miss coming at her on the inside. It's a rapper her miss who hit the front now from Serious Speed and Royal Harmony. A rapper her miss clear. A length and a half in front. Hold Serious Speed and a rapper her miss. Came away and scored by two length Serious Speed. Three
lengths, Marjorie or Royale Harmony for third place, a photo finish. Then Grand Journey, Eldana, Zarita, Reba, San. Followed further back, Bourgogne, Diana's Secret. Back behind. Getting up in the centre. Further out, Bantry Bay. Zarita got shut out. Diana's Secret in front of it from Aldana and Grand Journey down the outside. Zarita nowhere to go. On the outside, Sirius B goes up to Reva San. And getting up on the inside, Arapaho miss. And over on the fence is Royal Harmony at the 300 metre mark. Arapaho miss down on the inside, hits the front. Arapaho miss in front of Sirius Speed. Royal Harmony. Then further back, Marjorie Grand Journey. Arapaho miss in front. She's bursting clear. She wins the Oaks. Arapaho missed by two lengths. Sirius Speed second, three away third, either Royal Harmony or Marjorie out deep. Followed by Gr Well, the best day of one, didn't she? She just ran away from them in the end. Sirius Speed, I think, looked the winner for most of the stretch down the straight after being given a beautiful ride. Brown and Pat Carey ahead of Sirius Speed and Marjorie getting into third placing. Uh, congratulations, Shane. Uh, pretty good odds there. The winner there of the group one, the Crown Oaks. Yeah, well, I really like to run it. Uh, the Clanbrook team, uh, $22,000 horse by Daniel. The answer is stands for 110000 A lot of people spoke about this being an even bunch of fillies, unlike last year. You often get a standout like Miss Finland. But I reckon by the end of the spring, this filly has established that she might be all right. Uh, rap I missed. That was a very dominant. I don't think it was a strong field. I don't think it was a great race. But that dominant win. That hey? it was a dominant win though. It was a yes. dominant win, but I, I doesn't detract in one iota from Pat's great performance, uh, training performance, and Corey's great riding performance. They were brilliant, both of them. I think the thing that has got in its favour, Richard, as Ron's just mentioned, it was totally dominant. It was an awesome ride, and what we've learned to expect from Corey Brown, serious speed was good. Um, you know, look, after missing the start a little bit, it got the right sort of run in transit. But, gee, this does look as if it's going to get stronger and possibly go on in the staying features. Mm. Or much more brilliant than this grey mare. Well, Bruce, she's won over $3 million and 69000 if you like, and one-third. Would you have dappled right up? This is the one we're talking about, Miss Andretti. She's won 18 of her 27. And as we saw, she had glory against the world's best sprinters at Royal Ascot. No, of course, and she's just uh, got out to the dollar fifty at this stage. Uh, Miss uh, gold, uh, gold Edition rather started uh, at three. She's four dollars eighty there. They started her up. Regarded by most as a match race between these two mighty sprinting mares, and I think been taken late at the one fifty five. Miss Andretti. So bookies with a big lead for the carnival, another big lead today, blowing both these favourites and hope now. Now, Miss Andretti's out 20 cents, so Simon Beasley, as we heard right at the start of the day, said the $1.40, $1.50, well, you can shop 10 cents better than that. So they're just gambling a little with Miss Andretti, still long into the red. And uh, these things. Miss Andretti's almost at that stage. I mean, the really great horses go through a period, I reckon, in their career where they almost become unbeatable. And, and they, it's proven they all get done unless you're Grand Flaneur and retire after nine starts. But this mare's almost at that point, I reckon. It's a zone and it's a trot. Now the age classic, group one level. And they're set. Away they go. Golden Edition jump well from three, and Miss Andretti got away quickly alongside of her. Stands out and Zwicky's in behind the two speeding mares. And a score is coming close to the outside rail. Catachuchu eased over her heels. Oh, stuff, he's made a move here on Gold Edition. And he's split the field. He's gone to the inside. And knew it went with him. And has crossed over now and sits about a length and a half behind Gold Edition on Miss Andretti. Stands out as now last of that trio. And the trio on the grandstand side now. Swick and a score together and Catachuchu last. So, Gold Edition is the leader heading down along the flat side towards the 500. About a length and a half in front. Miss Andretti is staying right with her and they get right away then to stands out. And on this side, Swick is the leader from a score who's under the whip and Catachuchu. They're off the bit on the grandstand side and the duel is on. Here's Miss Andretti let loose by Newitt. He pulled the whip and she got the gold edition at the 200. But the grey bear tries to fight back. Miss Andretti got a neck in front. The champion's starting to assert a superiority. Gold edition stays on strongly but Miss Andretti beat her by three points. What a great battle. Six lengths away, stands out, held on for third, and the grandstand horses were left gasping, headed by Swick and Catachuchu with a score the last of the six. 
Gold edition at the 400 metre mark from Miss Andretti, who's going up to her. They're uh, in front over on the inside. Gold edition, three quarters. Miss Andretti right down the outside. Swick in front of Catachuchu. The two mares come together at the 250, and Miss Andretti takes the lead. Goldie is fighting back on the inside. Miss Andretti, a neck in front. Gold edition fights hard, but it's Miss Andretti. She's just in front of Gold edition. Oh, she's a mighty mare. Might be horse of the year. Miss Andretti, three quarters. Gold edition. Six away, third stands out. Then Catachuchu. Choose Swick and last as you would expect, they destroyed some good horses here. They blew them out of the water, and what a fascinating race because of what Starthy Casitas. We dream, we go to bed of a night and dream of getting horses like this, and she's unbelievable. Craig, she just proved beyond all doubt today. She's one of the best in the world. Sprinter, she she's she's found gold editions uh, limits, hadn't she? And uh, in the run of the line, it was just see you later. Mate, she's as tough as nails, that grey man. She just does not give in, but she's just in a class of her own. This. Craig, how'd you feel about the Spectre? They're always, uh, you know, this, this this match racing with this great gold edition's been built up all spring, and uh, there's a little bit of pressure involved. I mean, for us, there's no second prizes. You know, I can't say she ran well and she'll improve. I've got to go and win, you know, and fortunately, she's good enough that she can. Uh, she had a very hard run today. She did a magnificent job. Uh, the runner-up was fantastic as well, but I think they'll both sleep well tonight. So often they all had a sprinting mares the country's ever seen, I think. Look out, Hong Kong. Yeah, we look forward to a few Chinese feeds over there. I think you'll be having some good ones. Superstar. There's about a length between them. I reckon what you saw today is what you get. Miss Andretti's about a length too good for gold edition. The broken one nine. Right, horse of the year. That's just great. You can watch that ten times over and you don't get bored of Miss Andretti wins again. Wins number 19 from 28. They bet $1.60, that was a top flight. Gold edition, brave as ever. Heat stress, Miss Hens ready, stress, 350 and stands out well under Cold Dave. He's picked up a good check for third. Shane, but when Stathy went inside, you knew you were sensing something pretty special. Look, it, it, it made what was going to be a great race anyway even better. I, I love that when Stathy sort of foxed out there for a little while and then he said, I'm going over here, where are you going, Froggy? And Froggy said, I'm tailing you. I'll be right on your rump throughout. Right, we've got gold, gold edition. They're two of the really great sprinting mares we've seen. The others were spaced and they're no, no slouches. And it just was a fabulous race. It's three for three. Yeah, we didn't intend to let uh, Miss Andretti have a free ride on our wheel, if possible. And uh, so it's a bike race or a foot race or a horse race. If the horse sits on you and you do all the hard work, they'll jump on you. But as usual, the best horse won on the day. And... Uh, wonderful horse race and worth going a long way to see and it was very tactical and uh, just a shame that Craig knew it didn't come down the outside fence where we were trying to head him. Thank you for coming on. You seem to be, you've got a, another Maccabi Diva of the sprinting type. Yeah, Shadow, she's, you know, for, to have her so soon after Maccabi Diva has been a great thrill for us. Um, she's such a great sprinting mare and uh, these contests that she's had with Gold Edition over the last couple of weeks have really been a highlight of the carnival I believe. Certainly have. And you know, if I trained Gold Edition I'd be trying to get away from Miss Andretti and uh, and run a race on her own where we weren't stalking her and uh, yeah. it's evidenced by her wins last spring. Um, look I think she raced right at her absolute best Gold Edition. She's yep. just meeting a a great racehorse and that's mm. also evidenced by the fact that the Salinger winners 10 lengths of stern labouring. You know? Yes exactly. Mm. Good point. I, I've gone through my lifetime. I've never seen a better sprinting mare ever. I don't think you have, but I can't think of a better sprinting mare anywhere ever up to 1,200 metres. Can, can anyone else, can you think of one that, that might be in that category? Well, the world's a big place and I haven't been around all that long, so... I suppose when we talk about <laughs> Australia, you, you'd be talking, what, special, dual choice, those maybe, sort maybe of horses? Maybe Mahal. Maybe Mahal, but yeah, she's, she was but exceptional. A re, but a record probably has them covered. Oh, look, you're probably right. Well, I think the, the thing about Miss Andretti is she's 19 wins from 20-something starts. Mm. You just don't see horses do that at the top level. Too. And that international... Craig. Out of the gates, he's come across he's come and across. He's, he's got Craig thinking, OK, we're going to the outside <laughs> rail here. Now, if Craig had overcommitted and gone straight across outside those two inside him, bang. he might have been left there, but then started oh. thought, bang, I'll go across. And Craig, in a split second, followed him. And yeah. that, was the, and, and that Nash, was the winning move. I think it was Nash on the third horse there. He was quite smart getting into their sort of slipstream. Yeah. The pinch third money there but I think Lee's point was relevant you know you've got a Salinger a horse that wins the Salinger within a week 10 lengths away 
that just proves how good these two mares were at the top of their game yesterday, both of them. And I, I thought it was a fantastic race. A fantastic race. How'd she pull up, Lee? Um, she pulled up really well, Shadow. Um, fit and I think. Now, so you were looking for a... You were just, look, just going to, talking about Hong Kong when she's going off there. You were... Me, that no one else from Australia wants to go to that meeting this year. I mean, the prize money's fantastic and... Hong Kong's a vastly easier proposition to get to than England and Dubai and places like that. So, anyway, but in terms of horses going to Hong Kong, Cup Carnival, nine metres for Stakes Day. Weekend Hustler will be the star attraction in the Group One Emirates Stakes. Gun Sprint's been a we'll find the winner in this uh, last day of the carnival, and it's Weekend Hustler, the champion three-year-old in the Emirates Stakes. Two dollars, even money in the old language. Good cry, also at fifty dollars fifty. So good go there. So Tears I Cry also at 51 and $61. And he is the favourite. Uh, wonderful world there, $6.90 at the moment. On course, he's gone from $6 out to $6.50. The Caulfield Guineas winner, the place getter, $1.90 on Super Tab. On course, I can tell you he's $2.25, so he's just gone out from even... Caulfield Guineas in emphatic style. He ran terrific sectionals. I know he's going to have to prove himself pretty darn good but I think he can do it because I just think he's got that touch of $3.35 now for number 11 the favourite weekend hustler here's Brian Martin for the call of the Emirates there was Roman Squire there was Specking and back out of point as I speak uh, uh, one of stupid odds tears I cry right down the bottom there in 50 points but uh, it had plenty to come in I can tell you in goes the hustler in and back out Roman Squire comes up into the stalls Tears I Cry is going to be the last one to move in. Week one. They're off from the Emirates and Weekend Hustler jumped away OK towards the outside. Nick and Nero eases back and uh, so too in the early stages of the race does Valedictum and sorting them out. Shinzig bounced out with Sonic Quest who was away fast. Here's Speed from the outside coming over in a good tussle. Mr. Baritone's driving on with Lord of the Dance and Weekend Hustler. The three-year-old's going up as well. At the 1,200 metres, Lord of the Dance about a neck in front of Weekend Hustler, who now steadies to take the trail second. Mr. Baritone third, but they've burnt some fuel early. Next wonderful world outside of Shinzig, and they're followed by Sonic Quest. One tears I cry. Lad of them up the rear with Dr. Nip and Tuck. They're inside the 800, Lord of the Dance by two lengths to Weekend Hustler. A length, Mr. Baritone, Shinzig fourth. They're followed wonderful world on the outside of Sonic Quest, two lad of the manor. They're coming near to the home turn now. Then tears I cry and bird dancer as they swing around the turn. Into the straight now, Lord of the Dance by a length and a half. Being shaken up second, weekend hustler. Shinzig under the whip and then Sonic Quest is in the clear and running on. Further back, Mr. Baritone, wonderful world. Tears I cry is coming home fairly well. It's Lord of the Dance being tackled by weekend hustler. Shinzig in the middle. Here's Tears I cry starting to join in with a big run down the outside and Nikita Berryman hits the lead. Bird dancers flashing home now. It's Tears I Cry in front though by a length and a half a surprise and Tears I Cry wins from Bird Dancer. Shinzig has grabbed Bird. Close four. Valedict of Ore, Dr. Nip and Tuck. Then Roman Squire further back in the field. Nick and Nero out wide from Orange County. Weekend Hustler has finished in the middle of the pack in company with Lord of the Dance. They did too much early. Sonic Quest, Mr. Baritone, Ladder the Man, a wonderful world. A distant last is on you. And red letter day here for Nikita Berryman. They're going up to Lord of the Dance from Shinzig. Then Sonic Quest followed by Mr. Baritone. Wonderful World coming down the outside. And then Valedictum at the 400 metre mark. Weekend Hustler Shinzig. Lord of the Dance fighting on further out. Sonic Quest coming at them. Tears I Cry on the outside. The boulders ranged up. Then Orange County further out. Tears I Cry has raced up and hit the front from Shinzig. Bird Dancer further back and then Dr. Nip and Tuck. Tears I Cry in front and Tears I Cry. What a boil over. This is Tears I Cry. Has won just from Bird Dancer Shinzig, Dr. Nip and Tuck from Valedictum, then further, them, then further back in the race would have been the outside Roman Squire from Nick and Nero, Weekend Hustler, the bubble has burst with a bang, then Lord of the Dance. We've had Michelle Payne today, Nikita Berryman who's had all sorts of problems, I, I, I think with weight and diabetes and she was with Lloyd Williams for a long time, wasn't she? She has, she had uh, another day to do it. Extraordinary, and, and this first four is just going to be anything here, the, the trifecta at 16, 12 and 8. So Tears I Cry, beaten favourite on the, on the last race on Cup Day, getting home from Bird Dance and Shinzig. Down to you, John. This is some sort of a story for Nikita. <laughs> oh, Bruce, Nikita. Sick, Karen, Tash, the whole team. 
Unbelievable and the horse, wow. Wow, I'm so excited. Nikita, now you're ready to go. From Nikita Berryman, Karen Ma, what sort of a thrill is that? The group one on the final day of the carnival. Oh, it's unbelievable, man. It's, yeah. You're going in against Weekend Hustler, the boom horse in the race. You're at big odds. Did you give yourself any chance? Uh, yeah, with the weight drop and um, his run at the valley, I thought it was good. And uh, yeah, just with the weight, I give him a place chance, yeah. And he went around here on Melbourne Cup. Unbelievable. Maybe a drop of the bubbly for you two a little bit later on. Yeah, this is my girlfriend, Tash. She's stable foreman and on my backbone. I don't think anyone minds if you shed a tear. What about you, Tash? There she is. Tears I cry. What a boil over 63.50 on Super Tab. On course, as we said, came in from 150 to 1 to 100 to 1, but still enormous odds. Results you'll ever see. The only tears that Nikita will be crying are tears of joy. The same <laughs> tears that the bookies will be now wiping from their eyes. What a total wipeout. We just saw the set of resu results here. 16, Amazing, 12, 8 and 6. Nobody's got the first four. <laughs> There'll be a monster jackpot in do these days. I, I doubt the pool would have been 1.1 million, but let's hope someone's got a good slice of it anyway. No. Very little taken out of the bags. But I can confirm with you now, when I said there'd been a trickle of money, it was 150 to 1 into 100 to 1. And I have literally in the last few seconds confirmed on the phone with Sydney punter Sean Bartholomew that it was his money. He's claimed a Darwin bookmaker for a bet of 150,000 to 1,000, tears I cry, and then got as much of the 150s from along the rails for smaller bets here. Hard to work out how much how they've taken from the ring. Not a lot from this ring, but bookmakers around the country have been stung to a certain extent by this one because uh, Sean Bartholomew and his team out of Sydney have confirmed to me just a short time ago that they were the ones that caused the 50-point uh, coming in from 150s into 100s. Remarkable stuff, Pat. Thank you so much for that. So, Jonathan Punter, that is for sure. Better known for its jumps racing carnival in May, Warrnambool. Uh, they often use the beach as well. Look. <laughs> wow. There we go. The joint will be alive in Warrnambool. I can tell you right now, in Port Ferry, which is a lovely spot up that way, there's some fantastic people that have come from that racing neck of the woods. Have a look at you, love. Get a tape of that. You'll oh, get it. will be pumping tonight down there at Warnable. Good on you, Dal. That is good. Down there at Warnable. Good on you, Dal. That is gorgeous, isn't it? I can't believe it. He's just a great little horse. Peter. Oh, We've had so much fun with him. He's just a great little horse. And Nikita, you've just done a great oh, job. She's done a Herculean job, hasn't she? She has. Karen Tash, they've done a great job with this horse. Oh my God, I can't imagine this. I've never had a runner in Melbourne this, until this year. So, here she comes. How'd she get tears I cry? We bred him ourselves. Yeah. I, I helped him be born. <laughs> and on our farm at home and, you know, we got... Amused me. And it is the oh, greatest footage yes. you will ever see. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, you must see it. The owner of Tears I Cry, Anne McGrath, who is the clerk of the course at Warrnambool, and who bred the horse, was there when, the, when Tears I Cry was foaled, has raised the horse, owns it outright. Her reaction when the, the race was, yeah. was won, it is, it's the greatest vision racing will ever have because it shows to people, if racing's all about how much money you spend, then racing will become Formula One mm. and no one will want to play. Its greatest strength is that people like Anne can beat all the superstars, all the millionaires, and enjoy it more than they ever do. And mm. I think that is the most outstanding vision you'll see mm. all year. Now, just before we was in Melbourne, you were on the plane coming back from Melbourne last well, night. Well, that explains it. I was coming home from Melbourne last night. You know how they, the news, the local yeah. news and whatever, and they played that. And I'd say 90% of the plane wouldn't know what racing was all about. <laughs> yeah. But the plane erupted when they saw <laughs> oh. that vision. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it says to people you, yeah. you can be part of racing, yeah. you can enjoy it this much and you don't have to spend a fortune because battlers can still win. Exactly. We'll show it to you. But we are so pleased now that we've won this race. I thought, well, if we run eight, we'd get our um, acceptance fee back. I was hoping to run eight, to be honest. I, I was brought up with horses. I, you know, before I could walk, I rode horses. And um, my mum and dad put a lot of effort into this, uh, into me. Nikita Berryman. Just um, right, Andrew, and, you know, look, Weekend Hustler, you can probably say Danny should have done this, he should have done that. Look, the simple fact of the matter, the horse did not
perform. He'll go to the paddock now, he'll come back, and we'll see him right at his best again well, next preparation. Well, Alfie, on. Mm. Lee, what did you make of Weekend Hustler there? You know what a good horse is all about? Uh, look, I agree, I agree with Alf, actually. I think he's an outstanding horse. The times support that. And the fact I think it was just over the top from the from his huge effort in the in Cox, Cox Plate. Plate. Now, I just want to play this vision again for you because when you see this, look at Anne there in the black dress with a hand over her mouth. <laughs> the absolute joy <laughs> and elation on that woman's face. And she... <laughs> look at this. No one else in the stands back. <laughs> 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 It's and the best was, ever. And, well, and the bloke standing beside him, who we just saw briefly, he didn't know. He, he doesn't know them. He didn't know what was going on. But, uh, but I didn't think the person in the middle knew something to start with either. But I tell you something. You can show that vision to anybody, and Lee Lee has made a comment, and I hope you don't mind me saying it. Lee, you can say it when you come on air. But that's the stuff that oh, attracts sure. owners into yeah, the sport. You know, that, 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 that when I saw Tears I Cry win, forget the punt and all that uh, aspect of racing, but to see Kieran Ma, Nikita Berryman and those connections bask in the glory of Group 1 success over the Cup Carnival, it really hits home that racing is a terrific sport to be involved in because it's not all about the rich and the famous. And well, it's my pleasure to be this morning. Everything was gone and you were getting out of racing. Yeah, I just I'm gonna have a break for a little bit, but Geez, I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I'm still here. It's that stage, you know, I've been riding all my life and been working in the stable since I was 14 and, you know, I just got to that stage where I just had enough and you're right, I was in tears. I rode a double at Kilmore and any normal person would have been over the moon and excited that they had won a double, but, yeah, I was the complete opposite and I thought, oh, maybe if I just go home and see my mum and my sister and everything would be fine, but... I got the call from Kieran to ask if I wanted to ride Tears I Cry in the Emirates and it was half an omen if you look at it that way because I left the track on Monday crying <laughs> and in tears and then I get to ride Tears I Cry in the Emirates. So, yeah, I had a friend that he made that pretty clear to me that he thought that... Mares at Group 2 level. Now, it is a class field of mares going around. On course, more importantly, Translate $4.50, $7.00, Animato $9.90 for Red Falou. But on course, Canel $21, $26 actually into $18. Comes up into the gates for Ollie and Hidden Strings, who lines up at this Strings, who lines up at this carnival for the fifth time in her career takes the outside store to be second last around the home turn and joy of war coming around the bend and hidden string staying hard up against the rail the leader translate swings about five wide wrongful entity on her outside sovereign missed plenty of room to come through and chase the leader then a break to dan abate not much else is making ground here headed by maslin's beach and red falou hidden strings at the 300 from sovereign miss and then uh, on the outside of those wrongful entity translate was gone and then dan abate hidden strings in front of the 120 to go from Bromford and East Sovereign Miss and Dan Abate is coming with Dan Cannell. Hidden Strings is hanging on grimly down on the inside. She'll win. Hidden Strings first, either Sovereign Miss or Dan Abate second. Close up, Can Cannell. Maslin's beach out wide from Brom for Limiting and Game Serena. Further back then was Illinois Girl. Lee delivered at Flemington. Greg mentioned her fifth carnival here at Flemington, Hidden Strings. And have a look at this again. Look. Six, nine, and thirteen. Fifty-four dollars. Fourteen a place. Sovereign Miss. Thirteen Danavade at thirteen dollars ninety. Oh, look, this has been. I don't think we've seen two races consecutively quite like this at any carnival ever. Fifty-four dollars. Carnival ever. Fifty-four dollars. She's had eleven goes before today at Flemington and never won. She'd had four goes at the distance in her best position had been third. Today she wipes everybody out. 1.49 million for the first four with a jackpot. But he's a type of, look, he's a Zabil. He's never raced below 1,600. This is a horse that they've always known was a stayer. Uh, I'm not surprised that he's backed up because he really didn't. He only got clear galloping room for about 100 million. Well, and Chifano immediately bounced out. Completion eases, goes to the tail. Zabit was away well. Lacey under all jukebox Johnny just off a leading bunch. Bisbete pressing on a little wide. And a bit of catch me a few canners going on out there. And Chifalo opened up about six lengths now. In second placing at the moment is the beat. And then there's about four lengths away to Roanoke, who's now passed by Desert Master. Drax back and now Bisbete last. They're inside the 800 and Chifalo giving plenty of cheek. He leads by three lengths. 
In second placing is Zabit as they come around the turn. Desert Master handy enough, although niggled third. Two links, Roanoke, Lacey Underall, Jukebox Johnny running on. Completion now being asked to produce something, and then Reggie when they corner. Jafalo I feel, is running on empty, and of moving up to have a crack at him on the outside now is the beat, and he's about to go to the lead at the 400, and there's three links to Desert Master. Jukebox Johnny running on. Completion starting to pick up a little bit of ground with Reggie. It's the beat, the leader. The beat passes the 200, two links in front of Jafalo, who does stay on OK, but the beat has his measure. Completion gets up to third. The beat in front. Chafalo won't die. Zabit holding on. Zabit beat Chafalo by a length and a quarter. About four lengths away. Completion third. Reggie four. And then Desert Master. Jukebox Johnny. Last over is Viz Fatay. What a great stay as Tessa turned out to be. And Zavit, Pat told us there was a little bit of money for Zavit late. And we said if you could forgive the one run in the Saab that everything was right about this horse. Second in the Geelong Cup when favourite, second in the winning edge behind Master O'Reilly. That was... Reform reversal? Yes. All right. Well, He's only been one bad run this Well, spring. that's enough. That's oh. it. At, well, at, the end, at the end of a campaign, I've well, been backing him every let's start. Let's have a look with Andrea. Mate. OK. And like... Uh, uh, Zavi, he's been good all spring. He deserved he a good no, win. Look, he has been good until last Saturday, and uh, obviously he had an off day. Well, rightio, look at the pictures coming your way from Sandown, and of course, plenty of people there. Great weather down there, and uh, well, let go. Tomo is the favourite in the Kevin Heffernan Stakes, of course, the listed event at Wait for Age. Number one. Just off the fence a little, a length in front of Gibraltar Campion. Pencella on his post at three deep, and Coach Nero fourth the rail. A length further back in the race, and up to the turn, let go. Tomo Paris zero the middle. Out wide, zip and ease, further back, Cargo Colt. Reshuffles the fence, and last of all, Electric General, 400 to go. Gibraltar Campion goes to spec. Spectacular Saint at the 300 and takes the lead. Uh, Coach Nero the fence further back than Penn Celeron. Let go Tomo. Cargo Colt winding up and running on pretty well. Gibraltar Campion in front. Cargo Colt is finishing well. He's coming after Gibraltar Campion from Coach Nero. Gibraltar Campion in front. Cargo Colt won't get there. Gibraltar Campion a half length. Cargo Colt. Third Coach Nero. Fourth may go Paris zero or out wide Zipanese. Year old strikes here. Gibraltar Campion with the 51 kilos. A filly by Rock of Gibraltar using that weight advantage uh, and cry 56 30 for cargo cult two dollars coach nero one down radio number one master sass at nine dollars and forty cents the sakuna at 550 eleven dollars oh, distant melody yeah. seven ten shilling l man to win a race there no i wonder if this market mover does win bell center if uh, frank the clown's going to make the speech that would be something new. Out of the circle at the 8.50, the leader Master Sasson. A length in front of Winshear, a length further back than El Mandon third. Sakruna's had a good run fourth. They're followed by Bell Centra. She's fifth, but she's been three wide, the favourite. Then came Schilling from Distant Melody, Lucky Duke Modinari. Electra Motive and further back, Great Wall of China, Gazaguru. Rayburn, Raffaello, Protester and Flea Flicker last of all. Turning for home now on the Guineas and Winshear goes up to Master Sasson. On the outside, Bell Centra's still there. Going with her is Schilling, followed on the inside by Al Mandon. Then Motonari and further. Oh, one's uh, broken down. Motonari's broken down. Schilling ranges up now, getting a run through. Winchier coming at it. Master Sasson fighting back. It's Master Sasson. Schilling on the outside and Winchier. Master Sasson and Schilling. Schilling on the outside. Master Sasson fighting back. Schilling gets its nose in front. Schilling gets up to win the guineas. A half neck to Master Sasson. Winchier third. Bell uh, running on Electrum Motive has got up to run fourth. Uh, then further back, Raffaello. Okay whose uh, spring started pretty well with Ruby Cent winning the Underwood. Earlier he'd had the discipline. Send down Classic Group 2 at Wait for Age, of course, $240,000 for first prize. Top fuck into 240. Nothing backed away from the favourite. Uh, Blue Money. Here in Melbourne, it's been a, a sensational one, despite the, uh, the lack of uh, horses coming down from New South Wales and Queensland, but um, it's still been very successful. Now, Blue Monday, the important horse goes. Third, fourth jukebox, Johnny Redlord, the rail. Then zipping, just pulling a little outside at the fuzz. Who's going to be posted a little wide, followed by Blue Monday Borg. They've gone to the 800. Annex Stens had a good run in front. Two lengths in advance of Mandela, two to jukebox, Johnny. They're followed by Fire in the Night, zipping about four lengths off them, running fifth. Redlord inside it from Borghurst. Then Blue Monday, Can Canal, and the fuzz is last of all, coming around the turn. Annex Stens first for home now from Mandela. Jukebox, Johnny goes up on the outside, three deep. Then Fire in the Night under pressure. 
Zipping asked to extend down the outside after the leader. Jukebox Johnny gets to extend. And Mandela two lengths to Zipping. Red Lord inside it, running on fairly. Then a gap to Borghurst. Uh, here comes Zipping now. He's going after Jukebox Johnny. He'll hit the front. Now Zipping starting to kick in. He ranges to Jukebox Johnny. He takes the lead. It's going to be the favourites classic. Zipping coming away from Jukebox Johnny. Borghurst runs on. Zipping wins at a length and a half. Jukebox Johnny. Third home, Borghurst. Fourth is either Red Lord or Mandela. A gap then to extend. Blue Monday. Then Can Canal. A gap then to fire in the night. And the fuzz is last of all. Well, just way too much class there, Zipping. He went, when he went, uh, Arnold, you always felt confident that he really in Jukebox Johnny. In the end, it was a soft victory. Well done to uh, Team Williams. 3.7 as Zipping. John Sadler, now officially listed as the trainer. Stephen Arnold, the winning jockey. Of course, John Sadler. Dipping career win number 11 from just 28 starts and joins the list of Melbourne Cup uh, runners to come out and win the Sandown Classic, the first since a reliable Steve, but it was a touch of class there to give Steve back-to-back -back wins. Certainly was. He was clearly the best horse in the race. I guess we all knew that. It was only a question of whether he'd back up from the Melbourne Cup. We now know that he did. Uh, he's a pretty good horse, zipping his runs in feature races like the McKinnon and the Cox Plate was sound. Second, third, fourth were OK. Extend on the fence, I think, is probably six to 12 months away. He'll be a useful horse. Very, very soon. It's a great training effort, this, because to get a horse back to this sort of level after a Melbourne Cup run, and he had a pretty hard run in the Melbourne Cup too. That, that's, that's brilliant from Johnny Sadler who we all know is a great trainer and good to see him with the licence now and getting the accolades he deserves and also uh, see him with the licence now and getting the accolades he deserves and also uh, I think that's Zipping's absolute ideal journey. 2,400 metres, that's as far as he wants to go. I don't think he quite gets the two miles. It was a very start of the show uh, yesterday was a rather emotional day for Brian Martin who uh, called the quits as a race caller. Uh, our cameras we're in Brian's uh, broadcast box when he bade farewell. And 12, 16, 1, 4 and 12. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to take the opportunity of thanking the Melbourne Racing Club and thanking the race fans for uh, making this a great, uh, a great career for me. And I've enjoyed it immensely. Thank you and good luck and good health to you. Thank you. It's certainly been a stellar career for, for Brian. He is of my vintage. I've known him a long time. I first. Good luck in your retirement, Brian. And you, maybe you can back next year's Caulfield Cup, Cox Plate or Melbourne Cup winner because uh, Alan Scan has got the markets out already. Maldivian, favourite. Didn't run as favourite. Well, ran as favourite. She didn't get to the post, though. Maldivian, four days. What are you going to back here, Steve, in the Caulfield Cup? Absolutely no interest. Bruce, you can have 10 to 1 picking a runner with me. <laughs> Cox Plate Market then, let's have a look at what we've got for this if, you're, uh, if you want to bet out. It's, it's a big thing, anti-post betting in the UK. Punters love doing it in the UK. It's not taken the hold here so well. Coming off a derby last, last year, I presume, same motto here. It'll be Kibbutz favourite for the Melbourne Cup, is it? Yep. 14 to 1 for it, efficient. Uh, we'll be back to try and do it again. $17, Septimus, I think. I'd rather back Aidan O'Brien, I think. I'd rather back Aidan O'Brien to have a runner in the Melbourne Cup next year who would be a winning chance. Yeah, that's a, probably a fair strategy given that they're committed and probably Luca Kamani as well. Yeah, and I think